Hello and welcome to Estonia. Now this is a country that prides itself on being one of the least religious countries in the world. So this is the closest they get to worship. Tonight we will all kneel at the altar of BMX. This is Simple Session 22 and we're going to close out the weekend with BMX finals. Helping me pick through the action as it unfolds is one of the I've got to say, best looking, probably fashion icons of BMX. He's also an encyclopedia BMX here. It is Mr. Daryl now. Pleasure to be stood next to you, Daryl. Well, Ed, I got to say, that's quite an introduction. And I think anywhere I go, I'm going to have you with me because <laughs> I appreciate those kind words. And I also appreciate being with all of our BMX freestyle fans around the world for Simple Session 22. OK, you've been here for over a decade now. You've watched Simple Session evolve. It moved into the Puyola Hall last year. Talk us through that move and what it meant for the sport. Well, obviously, the last few years have been turmoil for everybody. And at Simple Session, the two organizers, Risto and Mario Calamre, changed things up. And we moved from our Saku Arena to a smaller, more intimate space, this Puhala Hall. But it's so great because what it doesn't have in, in size of the arena, it makes up in character. We're in this building where it used to be a boot manufacturing plant, but now it's a community center where outside they wind up having courtyards and there's different creative spaces and the riders are here and they feel the energy because this is also used as an event space and this weekend it's for a simple session. And that was evident last year. I mean, we can take a look at the highlights from last year. Like the standard of riding didn't drop at all did it from Sacco. If anything, it, it stepped up. Yeah, it really did. And as we watch just a few of the highlights from last year, what you can really see in the space, it still has the signature Simple Session feel, and it's that course. It's always designed by Nate Wessel, and it really listens to the rider and puts their riding in the front stage and gives them the ability to get creative on the course. And you see that with all of these signature, not only color ramps, but all the street elements and park elements brought together. And that, I suppose, is the biggest difference, that last year, for the first time in a few years, we saw Street and Park blended into one BMX title. That's the same this year. So the course presents a number of different challenges for each style of rider. And I put it to you at the start to pick out three different elements that you think are going to shine on this course. What have you picked? Yeah, well, my hat goes off to the legendary BMX ramp builder, Nathan Wessel. For 16 years, he's been designing our courses here at Simple Session. And as we take a look, you can can see in Puhala Hall, he had a challenge. He had 800 square meters to work with, where he had to basically work around these pillars and columns. And one of my favorite features on the course is this Doritos Volcano. You see that it's actually right in the center of the course, and it's gonna give riders an opportunity to blast and jump either across or use that curved volcano wall and potentially hit hips. And this is the closest thing we've got to a traditional jump box, really. That's correct. So Simple Sessions always been known for having those park features as well, but we might see some riders who are comfortable in parks really blasting and showcasing their comfortability in the air. Okay, second feature. Well, this course, again, we talk about being blended of street and park. Right now, this is a very unique feature that we like to call the banana. Essentially, it's a curved sub box. There's coping on either side, so riders can either jump into or grind utilizing their pegs. But if you look bookended on either side, there's also these sub rail features. So riders, we're gonna see potentially jump on, jump off, maybe even transfer to the Red Bull double barrel coping, grind down, but look for riders to utilize this and really get creative and show. Yeah, Boyd Hilder especially got busy with that in qualifying. Okay, third and final obstacle. Well, Nathan again took something that maybe would be kind of a standard obstacle where you could see a vert wall with a quarter pipe in front, but he said, hey, this is simple session, and he altered it where you actually see this Red Bull ski jump, and on the back vert wall, there's all these unique angles, and believe it or not, that quarter pipe actually has a concave so that riders really have to get finesse when they find their line and they can get their tires to stick properly on the wall and stick their tricks. And that is one of those true Nate Wessel signatures where he's demanding a little bit of creativity and imagination out of the riders and that's what gives the judges a point of differentiation. Yeah, he really gives them the canvas to just let their creativity shine.
Okay, well, we know that the riders, and well, we know that the course is the star of the show, but we also know that the riders play their part as well. And we've got a real, I mean, the standard in qualifying was so high, Daryl. Yeah, we had over 50 riders, and these are 50 of the world's best riders who put on quite a show. And we wound up cutting the pack down from 50 to 15, and the top three riders yesterday really excelled. Coming in third place was Courage Adams, and it was unique to see his riding, he almost took a more veteran approach, dare I say, where instead of focusing on what we've seen in the past, 30-second combinations out of Courage, where he's Dare really, I say impossible combinations. Yes, definitely impossible, <laughs> unless your name is Courage. But what we saw from him was really linking together on the course and almost a more veteran approach, and he was rewarded with that with third place. Second place went to Jordan Godwin. I was so impressed with his riding. One of his signatures is to utilize both sides of his bike, riding on his traditional side and his opposite. But you have to keep an eye peeled for Jordan because he is a rider who likes to switch his feet up and have a switch stance. Now, top honors went to the German, Felix Prennenberg. Look at that unique course obstacle where he actually jumped out into the crowd did a toothpick on his front peg and came back in. But look at the bike control, how he has no problem obviously going forwards or backwards, and it's never more apparent than that 180 on to 540 cab off. Unbelievable. Uh, now we've got the third member of our team is down course side. It's Tuliev Stignayev. And when you see her, I think it's clear that I'm the only one who didn't get the safari theme message. <laughs> Felix, what an absolute joy it is to have you back in the finals, qualifying first. You were the champion of 2019 and 20. Last year you had to skip the finals because of an injury and you recently just recovered from an elbow surgery. Welcome back. What are the emotions? Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be back. I know, I've been coming here for so long and uh, now just coming back from an injury, feeling comfortable on my bike again, just being here with like all my friends pretty much. Just so fun and yeah, feels good to be back. I mean, you were killing it in the qualifiers, obviously, you qualified first. Any special tricks we can expect from you in the finals? I don't know. I guess I'll try to squeeze some, some more stuff in here and there, but we'll see. I mean, I'm pretty happy how I rode yesterday, so um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Very excited to see your ride, and good luck to you, and I'll let you go back to the line after the others. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Tuli. Uh, I mean, a really relaxed laugh there from Felix at the end. He looks, he's got good reason to be relaxed. Yeah, I mean, he was the only rider that was in the 90s. And might I add comfortably in the 90s. He had a 91. He looked so confident in control out there. I'm excited to see what Felix is going to bring to our final. Yeah, it's going to be pretty spectacular. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot because you're going to go down to the uh, contest floor in a second. Quick predictions before you go. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Well, I got to tell you, it can be anybody's game. Honestly, this course is really unique out here, and the fact that it's best run counts, that's going to be very interesting and different than our qualifier. The riders are going to have 60 seconds, and they're going to have to throw down. The level of riding in 2022 is so high, it's really going to be whatever rider can get the full pull without the clock, and it can be anyone's game. Okay, incredibly diplomatic there from Daryl now. Um, uh, now, Simple Session is so much more than just a skate contest or a BMX contest. It is a festival that's celebrated throughout Tallinn. Check this out. <laughs>
A glimpse of the hot tub jump in Freedom Square there. Now, Daryl's made his way down to the floor. They're going to introduce all 15 finalists in just a second. Uh, but that was a glimpse of the festival side of Simple Session. And one of the biggest battles, I'd say, for the riders is showing their maturity and surviving the party schedule in the build-up to the contest. It is an incredible setup here. Some of the parties go on into the early hours of the morning, and making sure you're in top form to ride this course is one of of the precarious things that you have to navigate. But right now we're gonna head down to the competition floor. Daryl is there with Andy Zeiss. They're gonna meet our top 15 finalists. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, one more time, good looking people of Tallinn, Estonia. This would not be a true simple session party without my brother. You saw him on the big screen just a moment ago. And just like that, he's with us on the floor. So how about it? You bring a big ass band of applause for Daryl now. Thank you very much, Talent Estonia. We absolutely love you. Let's keep the energy going and bring it back for my co-host, Andy Zeiss. As handsome as us two are, this show is not about you. It is not about us or myself. It's about all these handsome gentlemen just behind us. And let's introduce them, please, to the world. Starting from the left-hand side, qualified in 15th place, representing the beautiful country of the Ukraine. Make some noise for Maxime Vespali. Our next rider, 31 years old, doing it for Adidas, 5'10", from Hamilton, USA. Put your hands together for Colin Vernyak. You keep that energy going, and we're sending it all the way to San Vito, Costa Rica. Make some noise for the Tensio Bike Shop rider, Alvaro Esquivel. Our fourth rider in the finals, 25 years old, doing it for Federal Bikes from Melbourne, Australia, and this is Jackman Hens! We keep in that Southern American spice up, originally from Medellin, Colombia, doing it for King Bikes, living in Barcelona, España, Santiago, Our next rider is a crowd favorite on the course and the dance floor. 25 years old, doing it for Federal, Northwich, Great Britain. Dance together for Joe Jarvis. And we are keeping it in the United Kingdom. This is his first time ever to the Simple Session in Talent. And he's having a blast. He made it to finals. Makes the noise for the Source Rider from Hastings, England. This is Stuart Chisholm. Our next rider. Our 2021 defending Simple Session champion, 28 years old, riding for Red Bull from Huntington Beach, California, Brock Rayford! Another rider from the United States of America representing Minnesota, the PSD forever, ever rider. He's the master of the Kadama and of the dance floors. Make some noise for the Simple Session All-Star, Reed Star! Our next rider, 28 years old, doing it for Kink BMX from Lyon, France. Hands together for Anthony Perrin! We are
are taking the attention to the 2013 and 2016 champion. Ladies and gentlemen, originally from Mexico, now from Tucson, Arizona, the Vans and Mongoose Rider makes some noise for Kevin Peraza. Our next rider was your 2019 a Simple Session Park Champion. 26 years old, riding for Federal Bikes from the Gold Coast in Australia, Boyd Hilder! We are getting louder and prouder. You know him, you love him. From Pamplona, España, riding for Red Bull, Vans and Flybikes, Courage Adams! Your second place qualifier, 26 years old, riding for We The People from Wales, Great Britain, Jordan Godwin! And last but not least, certainly not least, the number one qualifier, the handsome gentleman all the way on the right, representing Cologne, Germany, we the people, and Kunstform, make some noise! doubt about it. We have got an embarrassment of riches when it comes to riders. Four previous champions, but no shortage of riders who could take this out today. On my personal scorecard, I would love to see Courage Adams do it. I think he's become a mature competitor and he's got all of the street skills, but he's also brought in the park skills as well. The format, breathtakingly simple as all of the best ones are. We've got two runs of one minute best run count, so it promotes progression and creativity and it's not over until the last rider has dropped. It's time to get Simple Session 22 BMX Finals underway. Let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Puhala, the old rubber factory, a packed crowd and 15 of the world's best riders ready to throw down their very best runs in the hunt for the Simple Session 22 title. Daryl now sat next to me, one of the oracles of BMX. I've got to say, I, I made a little prediction there at the end of the pre-show, Daryl. I think we've got four previous winners here in the shape of Kevin Peraza, uh, Brock Rayford, um, who else have we got? Uh, uh, Felix Prangenberg and Boyd Hilda. But I feel like Courage Adams is one of those riders who's matured as a contest rider. Well, Ed, yes, good thing you bring that up. We did see that yesterday in our qualifier. As we talked about, he had a different approach. Rather than sticking risk versus reward, going with that 45-second combination, he threw a lot of smaller hit combos together that were equally impossible. So maybe he will take a different approach. But that's what we're going to see today. The riders are really going to have to work with this Nate Wessel design course and utilize the entire 60 seconds out there. Judges are looking for a perfect run on the course course in terms of full time beginning to end and the reason I say the term perfect is because each one of these riders to even make it to this point at simple session through qualifying and to even be selected to potentially qualify these really are the best riders. Maxim Bespe drops in 30 years old out of the Ukraine he did his full Maximus Aurelius rubbing the dirt off the ledge there onto his hands before he dropped in. Yeah, Maxime, it's very interesting. Ah, 
having a little difficulty right there, but hopefully he'll get back up on the horse and work through it. Very interesting rider. Actually was living in Moscow for many, many years, but had to wind up relocating to Barcelona. His brother Igor is out there. His parents are out there as well and they're now living in Barca. And look at that feeble grind, go in the distance right there, very difficult to do. He's balancing his front wheel on that kinked rail, his back peg is locked in, and he was able to go the entire distance. And what he's, Whoa! He's, he's got one of those really quiet styles that belies just how hard the tricks are. Yeah, his ability to lock in on double tire rides is unbelievable. Oh, held on to that one. Him and his brother both really have just set the whole new standard for double tire rides. These are round rails, round tires, and that precision is something else, especially when Bisfali is on it. The yeah, point of contact is minute to get the apex of the tire and the apex of the rail. It's, there's no margin for error. Now, Ed, as we're starting to look at some of the highlights from his run, I do want to take a moment and give a shout out. He actually just got himself a brand new sponsor, 70s Disney in Hastings, England. They have a brand called Federal Bikes, one of the best street brands out there. They just picked up him and his brother. Look at that line right there, double tire ride, and actually got the Nolly bar spin off. But I had a chance to talk to the Federal Bikes owner, uh, Stu Dawkins, also Colin at 70s, and they couldn't be more excited to have these two street destroyers repping Federal and excited for what's to come in the future. And right now, we just saw Bisbali really put together a solid run on the course. He did have a couple bobbles there, but the double tire up the kink rail with the Nolly off where he pressed on that front wheel shows how much the Ukrainian had bike control and it's reflected in his score. 73.33. So a proper range finding score from the judges there. A little bit higher than I was expecting with those issues, I think. But next up, Colin Varanyak out of the States, the 31-year-old out of Hamilton, practically born on a bike, Daryl. Yeah, Colin's a very exciting rider. You can actually just see how fit he is. And the reason I bring that up, he takes his riding so serious. He's definitely a rider that has that mind-body connection and puts the time in. Obviously, all riders to be this good and make it to the stage. But Colin really takes it to another level. And look at that right there. There's the banana gapping to a double peg grind and then going all the way the distance of the transition. Oh, we saw that as the centerpiece of his qualifying yesterday. Yes. He did manage to stick it second run, but and I think that was a big, oh, first time we've seen that. Very creative use, of course. Judges do want to see a rider's unique approach because this course is only designed for this event. And right now, Varignac kicking the tail whip off that up rail feeble grind. Varignac doing it for 5'10 Adidas, also Terex, so talented. He also rides for Fiend, which is Garrett Reynolds by company, and he rides all the time with Garrett. Garrett wasn't able to make it out on this trip, but I know Garrett is cheering on Colin as he does that double peg up 180 off the kink rail. Really smart riding. He's been reading the judges. Oh, going for the manual through that banana. He's been reading the judges. He knows exactly what they're looking for. Yeah, so right there, trying to squeeze in a final thought. So, as we mentioned, it's going to be a 60-second run on the clock. Best run counts. If a rider does have a problem or they wind up crashing, they can get back up on their bike and utilize the time. Obviously, they want to stick a perfect run. But with the technical abilities of riding this day and age, it might even come down to a run where a rider's not able to get exactly what they wanted. But right here, we're looking at Colin, and he did get the distance with a nice tuck coming off the that double coping. Oh, so look at that. Just getting the toothpick hanger 180. He had to clear his back end up and over the rail. He got the full spin out. But I'm so impressed with that line. First rider we saw utilize. I had a chance to ride the course in practice, and that's extremely steep. Reed Stark and I were looking at that. We didn't even know if anyone could even grind up that slow, let alone get a big tuck and go the distance. We're looking right now. Those were our three judges. We have Tom Sillens, who's from Riga, Latvia. We also have Marcus Vilke, who's from Germany. And we have Dave Kleeworth, known as Hank. And those are our three BMX judges. Okay. 67.66 for Colin Baraniak. Now, this performance, just being here, means the world to Alvaro Esquivel. 
It really does. Right now, I know every BMX rider in Latin America watching, we cheer you on, and Alvaro wanted us to let you know how much your support means to him right now, because this was his dream to be here at Simple Session. The idea he's even in the finals is so amazing. We are watching a dream become a reality in real time. 100% risen to the occasion there. Beautiful little nose money, three out. Yeah, take note on those nose manuals. He has the ability to actually rotate in both directions. It's really cool from that. Also, the Costa Rican BMX scene isn't that large, but it's extremely tight. And he rides for another BMX shop, a BMX rider who has a shop, Kenneth Tensio, which you know that name. He's been at Simple Session before. And it's so cool to see that support from the other riders. And I had a chance to hang with Elvaro a little bit. And he said that he wanted to give a shout out to his mom, Sandra, also all of his uncles. And his crew are cheering him on right now as he's getting the manual. Oh. Trying to find a, maybe a ledge or something to grind on, but very impressive seeing him riding. He's got a little bit of bark missing off his cheek and off his shoulder. He took a bit of a uh, slam, I think, earlier in the week. Yeah, and he actually took two really hard crashes. One was in practice and the other was at the street jam. He is a warrior. He has bruised ribs right now. You can also see on his knuckles right there. No, he didn't get in a bar fight, but he did have a fight on the course. Right there, pressing into that G-turn, getting the full spin. Look at the bike control, the double tire ride, kicking the tail whip. And a cool fun fact, he gets support right now from Colt BMX. I had a chance to reach out to Colt owner Robbie Morales last night, and he said Alvaro is his dude down in Costa Rica, and he's really excited to start working with him more and more and he loves that Simple Session creates that global platform for riders and have those sponsorship opportunities. Okay, we're going to head down course side now. Tuli Yevstigneyev is with Alvaro. Alvaro, we're so happy to have you here at Simple Session. As the host said before, this is an absolute dream of yours to come to Simple Session. Let's talk about that. Also, it took you 72 hours to get to Estonia from Costa Rica, right? Yeah, it's so... Beautiful to stay here with all the pros I admire all my life and was a dream when I was a child competing here and so much love to all Latin riders that are straying the streets and I hope see you here in the next years. Thank you and love you mom and all my family. Thank you so much. We're very excited for your second run. Well, we're very excited for your second run. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm going to put better in the next round. So I hope everything is uh, going perfect in the net. Thank you. Good luck. Awesome. Thank you, Alvaro. What a legend. Yeah, so exciting. As we talk about Simple Session, the global platform for BMX and skateboarding, so many opportunities come if a rider can make it to the finals and they can make a name for themselves. I love that Jackman Hins with a little bit of Goodfellas style. That's a really nice little polo. Yeah, he definitely has the good style in dress and on the bike coming all the way from Melbourne, Australia. 25, this is another rider, first time here at Simple Session. He wanted us to give a little shout out to his mom and dad. We're talking about Dee and Aaron who are cheering him on. It's so cool that we're getting a chance to witness so many new riders this year as well in the final. So Jackman starting things off, double tire ride going up and down both times with the bar spin right there. Another rider repping for Federal Bikes. There's four Federal riders in the final. And like I said, I had a chance to talk with Stu Dawkins, owner of Federal, and he's so proud of the boys out here repping and ripping with that double bar spin out of the banana. He's got nearly a full pull of riders in the final, hasn't he? So he'll be over the moon. Yeah, I think uh, we should all follow Stu Dawkins bets if he's a gambling man because he has the winning equation to get riders in the final and Jackman right there with a feeble grind pressing up on the front wheel and a bar spin down to a tail whip fakey. Now we saw that the bar spin tail whip fakey but that lovely tire ride. Yeah that was a killer combination right here. He's got 10 seconds to go. These are going to be crucial as he hits a manual to double peg looking for that bar spin into the quarter pipe and he's going to wind up waving off the last couple seconds there. Yeah, I, I don't blame him. It absolutely smashed that. So much bounce to the ounce in that run. 
Yeah, it's really important for a rider to utilize the entire course. We talk about finding their line out there, and essentially if a rider has a trick that they want to do, you usually have to dissect it a couple walls ahead of time and get yourself lined up. But Jackman started off perfectly with that double tire ride to bar spin going up and down. And then I love the toboggan and the double bar spin out. You see the perfect cadence of the handlebars, but this was the cherry on his Sunday for the run. He's got that feeble grind, total bike control, nose box with the bar spin. And look at as the tail whip, he lands fakey, has the free coaster, so his cranks don't engage, and the dial rollout. Nicely done, Jackman. A lot, a lot of heat. I think this score is going to really push us up a little bit. I'll be interested to see where he goes with this. At the moment, Maxime Bespe on a 73.33. Jackman Hinn, 79.66 on his first run. And that gives him, with this format, best run counts of the two. So that gives him total freedom to really, really push with that second run now. Yeah, that's got to feel great as well, getting the run in and leading the board as we work our way through first run of two in our riders in the final. Okay, look at these boys getting busy out here. The Colombians making their presence felt in the grandstands. And it is Santiago Laverde, 23 year old. Very exciting rider. You see he's representing and riding for Kink Bikes. I had a chance to talk to TM, Jay Rowe. Actually been living in Barcelona the last few years, putting a little baby powder on the paws right there, making sure that the hands aren't too sweaty. He's also sponsored by Jay Rowe's new shop called The Cut. It's a super core BMX shop out in Barcelona. And look at that, the tabletop. I've been so impressed with Santiago's riding. It's been really great combination, and that's what we talked about, the park element over the Doritos Volcano, getting that style. Well, he's got he's, he's got that blend, hasn't he, perfectly. There's park elements, and there's some really heavy street elements in there as well. Yeah, Santiago also wanted to give a shout out to his mom, Gloria, and also his personal hairstylist, who happens to be his girlfriend, Nene, right there, just making it look good so he can just ride his best. Nice toothpick hangover to crank arm slide. A lot going on on that short rail. Let's see if he maybe utilizes this center stage, feeble grind foot plant 180. So he's got to work with this 12 seconds to go. If a rider has their momentum, maybe where they're not in that flow, it's a little difficult to find, but hopefully he can get time in for a final exclamation point. You hear the crowd reacting extremely well to the style right there, getting twisted off, a little bit of a knack-knack, throwing it up to the crowd, and who's actually pointing to, he's got all this support out here from the Columbia family in the house. They came all the way from Medellin to be out here, cheer on the riders, and be a part of Simple Session. Yeah, Andrea Sochoa was in there as well, wasn't he, earlier in uh, qualifying. So no shortage of riders there, and there's a cue to congratulate him now that he's finished. Look how cool that is, too. This is the top athletes in BMX, and they're all supporting each other out there. Big air blasting all the way into the Doritos logo over the Doritos Volcano. Bar spin in, suicide no-hander out. It's called that because he's pinching the seat with his knees to keep the front end up. Nicely done on the canyon rail with the crank arm slide. That's about a four foot drop at the end. Great how Santiago was able to keep his speed throughout. Got that nice little foot plant out of the feeble grind. And there's that style. I do dig that he almost brought a trails element over the volcano. And what I mean by that, Riders that tend to ride trails as opposed to park usually are a little bit more flowy and focus on how a bike can be manipulated in the People air. It's a very difficult thing to do, I but like Santiago really did it great like over that best. volcano. Okay, we can hear from Santiago now. He's with Tule. Santiago, super awesome to have you back here at Simple Session. Last time when you were here, it was winter, now we have summer. More of your climate, right? Yeah, yeah, I fucking love it like that. It's perfect, actually perfect. Uh, the weather is like lovely like that and uh, it's, I don't know, I prefer it like this and the snow, like the annoying the snow, so it's perfect. As the host just said before, you have such a perfect blend of riding, so you have park element to kind of bring some, some like, special stuff in there. Do you want to talk about mm, I don't know, I just enjoy riding everything that is rideable and I don't know, I think that's what it's all about, like just riding and having fun and nothing else matters, just have fun and ride whatever that appears in fucking in front of you, you know? Absolutely, what a great attitude. Thank you so much. Good luck to you in the second run. <laughs>
It's getting as loose as a rental bowling shoe out there, Daryl. Santiago really enjoying himself, and if riding is an extension of your personality, then <laughs> Santiago's riding is fun. This man is definitely going to bring the party to the course, though. That is for sure, if riding talks to personality. He's been as busy at night as he has through the day. It is Joe Jarvis. Joe Jarvis, always an exciting rider. I like to think of him as the people's champion because he can just bring up the energy and support anybody. He's been doing it at our street jams all around talent. Now let's see what he's gonna do in the finals. Nice crooked ride, double peg to bar spin. So you're seeing already he's utilizing both sides of the pegs. He's got four of them. It is BMX freestyle. A rider could set their bike up any way that they want. Jarvis opted for four pegs and it gives a rider some more options or opportunities on the course. Right now on that front peg, getting the hang five, kicking the tail whip around. Every single time. Right to pedals. The Federal Rider ripping in, getting the speed. I like the way he bunny hopped into that Red Bull ski jump to get the momentum. That was big right there. Double peg with the 360 out. X up grind coming down. Right now, he's got a solid run going, Ed. It's incredible if you look at it as well. Really low tempo start with all the tech, and then he's just started to speed things up. Really started to bring the power towards the end of the run. I love doing that. Yeah, right now, he's got to keep that momentum going up on both pegs with the balance point. Hang going 10, baby. Going across <laughs> that main stage. Let's see. Double peg, 180. Buzzer going off. And that 360 was after the buzzer right there. You saw that he wound up spinning the hard way off, but Jarvis getting a full pull. Yeah, big, big run. In this format, so good for your strategy to be able to lay down a clean run first go and then take all of the limiters off on your second run. Yeah, in 2021, Jarvis got sixth place in the finals. I know he'd love to move up the ladder, potentially getting on a podium. Let's look at some of the interesting and powerful riding of Jarvis completely in control. Big bar spin out of that double peg grind. You mentioned how consistent he's been on that hang five. That's a technical trick right there. Whiplashing the back end around. Double peg on his non-traditional side with the tail whip off. And look at this. A lot of bike control and then spinning that 360 out of the handrail. He had to pull so hard for that. Yeah, he really utilizes his height and power. And this was cool right here. Just a double peg on the main stage and showing, hey, I can make it happen. Coming up and off, putting two tricks bookended is a difficult thing to do. And you see him getting some love right there from the source's own. Stu Chisholm. Who we have yet to see. Okay, let's hear from Joe Jarvis. Joe Jarvis, it's an absolute joy to have you back here at Simple Session. Definitely one of my favorite interviews from last year with your 20 pack. <laughs> How's it going this year? Good, yeah, really good. No 20 packs this time, but I'm out here with my really good friend Stu, who's next. So yeah, it's sick, I'm stoked to be out here. Well, Joe, you took the lead. I did? <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Let's go, you heard it from the man himself. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, oh, stoked. Well, go have fun, go no, get it no, Thank you so much for the best. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Look at that, celebrating already, Joe Jarvis cranking an 86 for that run. He puts five and a half points on Jackman Hens. Stu Chisholm next up, can he best his mate, Joe Jarvis? So excited right now to watch Stuart Chisholm in the finals, first time here in talent. You see on his t-shirt right there, Source BMX. They are located in Hastings, England, one of the best international mail order companies in the world, but they also have the world's largest underground skate park. The reason I bring that up, that is Stu's home park. I know everyone at the Source right now is cheering Stu on. Not only does he work at the park, teaching and giving lessons, but he's worked at the Source for years. Tom Creasy is so psyched, as right now Stu drops in, 60 seconds are on the clock, and a bar spin to smooth manual. Oh, lovely. I know that he credits, I had a chat with him last night, and he said that the source gave him focus and purpose in his life. And that's evident in the way he rides. Love that transfer. Love that. The only man doing that in qualifying. Now, Ed, that's a very awkward transfer. It's hard to get lined up for that. And you have a very narrow takeoff. But that double bar spin, 180 over the volcano, smooth as can be. Same thing with that spin out of the wall ride. And look at the combos. Oh, just losing that there. That was, that was setting up so tech. It was a big, big step up from his qualifying run. 
Stu also repping BSD, getting the bar spin with the manual. Ice pick, nicely done. It's called the ice pick when the back peg is on. You saw that he actually had a chance to get some balance down the rail. Bar spin in, tail whip out. That is hard to do. And a flare! What? There we go, we're seeing Stewart throw in a little bit of park flavor. As we talked about, he spends a lot of time at Source Park, and he does have those park tricks. But the cool thing with that flare, that is such a steep vert wall. It's a tight transition on the bottom, and it's got about five feet of vert. You can see right there, Joe Jarvis, so pumped for his fellow UK brethren. As we're looking at that bar spin to manual, there was a highlight. No other rider thus far has taken that line in the competition, throwing the bar spin over the rail. Right here, getting the bar spin, finding the balance point on the back wheel. There's that ice pick, got the same balance point, except on the peg. It is not a short driveway either, is it? And take a look at that flare. So cool to see his back wheel roll all the way up to the top of the coping. That is so steep and so hard to do. And I couldn't be more thrilled to have Mr. Stu Chisholm repping hard. Okay, so we're six riders down who've already got scores on the board. Stu, the seventh rider. So we're coming up to the midpoint of these first runs of Simple Session 22 BMX Finals. Little wry smile there from the judges. We can actually see that's Tom Sillins from Riga, Latvia. And look at this score coming in. All right, a 77.66. Gonna put Stewart in fourth. Not enough to bump him up to that potential podium spot, but he's gonna have another opportunity for a second run. 100%, and we know that, well, he knows that there's a lot of room there for improvement. He'll know that he can bring that up. So Brock Rayford, 2021 champion, back to defend his title. And it is such a heavy hitting field here. He knows he's got to ride out of his skin if he wants to make even the podium, let alone the win. Yeah, Rayford in the last few years has really stepped his game up and it's been apparent because he's won every single major competition for the last two years, including Simple Session in 21. This week we had jams all over Estonia and he actually was the overall winner when we had a jam at a mall. Right now, Rayford getting a big 360 backwards off of that elevated ledge. Very cool to see the bike control. Rayford bar spin in the banana, tail whip out. See him readjust his foot placement after he landed. You can see the confidence as well. Rayford, at 28 years old, has a lot of experience here in Talon. Bar spin double peg grind, hopping over, landing in that little transition. That's an important thing if a rider wants to keep the speed as opposed to landing on flat. Pacing it up. Putting the gas on. What? Using the wall as the sub box up at the back there. Massive from Brock Rayford. Rayford just peeling back the throttle and going all the way up. Bar spin, toboggan down, and that is the buzzer for your defending champion, Brock Rayford. Now, I'm convinced watching it that one of the biggest highlights for the judges from Joe Jarvis's run was exactly that, changing the tempo. You don't just start fast and then gently fade down as you get more and more tech. He, he worked his way around the course, covered a huge amount of ground. He got really technical in parts, he was really flowing in parts, and then he just sent it. Yeah, Rayford is such a powerful rider, and the tempo definitely is one of the highlights of his run, and that's because he had the tech you're talking about, 360 coming back, and you don't get more technical than the feeble up nose bonk bar spin, but this is where the tempo, the throttle got peeled back, and he is in the rafters here in our factory. Bar spin up, and then just saying, hey, you know what, I'm gonna throw a toboggan, <laughs> nice and smooth for Rayford. I'd love to see another replay of that big wall ride because it looked like he had to get the front wheel out over the Estonia board to actually get it up onto the wall. Okay, we can go down at course side now. Tuliev Signeev is with Brock Rayford. <laughs> Brock Rafer, the defending champion of Simple Session, you're back. And what a run that was. I mean, epic control of the bike, so much power, and you took the lead. Oh, wow, I didn't even know that 
yet, but that's awesome. I mean, everybody's killing it today. It's awesome to be here right now with all these amazing riders. Everybody is absolutely shredding, and I just can't wait to see the rest of it, honestly. It's going to be so good today. I mean, it is also a pretty epic lineup of riders here today. Uh, are you going to amp it up in your second run, or are you just going to watch how the others go? Judging by qualifications, practice, and just knowing how good all these guys are, I'm definitely going to have to amp it up in my next uh, run, but I'm just looking forward to it because I'm having so much fun. Thank you, and we can't wait for your second run. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you so much. Quite literally, Brock Rayford has put the level on the roof. If you want to get in there, you've got to do a little bit of work up high, I think. You can't stay down low. Reed Stark, I loved Andy Zeiss's intro for him at the beginning. Called him a simple session all-star. He's one of the regulars out here in Estonia, and he embraces every aspect of Tallinn when he comes here. Yeah, Reed does quadruple duty out here, not only riding in the contest, all the jams, also also doing Kendama, but he's been DJing as well. He's been hitting every single party. He's even going to be at our after party. He's always celebrated. What you actually see right now, he's pointing on the course because when Reed Stark drops in, the excitement goes up and any lines are possible. So Reed right now peeling back the throttle. You can just see he's accelerating across the course, going all the way up that unique vert wall and a big transfer. Oh. Only rider we've seen go the distance. That is so far, it's almost 20 feet to land on that stage. Feeble grind on one side, jumping all the way to a manual, hitting the ice pick on top of the vert wall. Just laser quick through here. He's dropped it down a cog and given it a handful right from the off. The BSD rider, two bites of that cherry. Working the course right now. These are all the little details you can see. He hits the nose bonk, coming in over the Doritos Volcano, stylish tabletop. Loving that as a return, and then that oververt pillar in the corner there, cranking back up to this end. Lovely transfer from Reed Stark. Reed right now keeping the technical going with the over ice pick and then hitting the dark side ice pick. You see he has no brakes on the bike, so he has to fish down to adjust speed and gets an ice pick to Fakey right up in front of the fans. And you can just hear the Estonians loving Reed Stark. Wow, very, very interesting. Another whole dimension for the judges to consider here because he's got super tech, but he's done it at Mach 10. Yeah, the speed is a key factor for Reed. He also had the creativity with that big Smith stall on the pillar. That he took a leaf out of Felix Prangenberg's book, like doing the ice pick fakie right in front of the crowd. I know that Sharon and John, his mom and dad, are so psyched to watch the high speed gap to double peg. And take a look at that table, just throwing in a little bit of trail style, showing you that he's a very well-rounded rider. First one we've seen go the distance from that vert wall across. You have to pull far out and look at that hitting a dark side ice pick with the transfer. Great riding from Reed Stark. Beautiful bike control just with that little power slide as well. Taking, because have a look at uh, Reed's bars. You're not going to see any brake levers. So he needed to slow things down to get busy back on that volcano again. Reed rides for BSD. He's got his own signature bike and line safari crew. So definitely check it out. You see the safari pattern on his seat. But Reed Stark's riding is all his own. And I'd like to almost think there's a signature Reed Stark. Stark riding, and look at that right there. 81 points, third place for the part man, part giraffe, all ripper. Way to go, Reed Stark. A little glimpse of Boyd Hilda there in front of him. He's still to drop, as is Anthony Perran. The Frenchman out of Lyon. You said it, I mean, there's no shortage of confidence. There's no shortage of skill here, but He's a quiet one. He loves letting his riding do the talking. Yeah, and he really has such bike control on another level. That's why he's actually won Nora Cup Awards for video parts. And those are selected by their other riders, your contemporaries, your peers, are saying you put in the most amount of work or the riding's the most progressive. So we're going to try to break down Anthony's run and see just what we got there. Now, that's some signature front wheel and also front peg toothpick hanger up the rail. Anthony has a tendency to lock in better than any other rider and that was a really cool move where he actually did a rear wheel jam up the side of the banana it's not totally vertical but he was able to get the finesse and pop up nice bar spin to ice pick down the ledge and look at the control right here even though his tempo 
is he's setting the pace and Anthony's in control. He's not stressed out by the clock or the course, and he's just taking his time out there to find the lines and find his rhythm. It's really tough for him though, because Ooh, oh. that was great. And that's what we talked about. Heron's signature is locking into these toothpick hangover grinds. And again, the toothpick is on the front peg. Back wheel balanced with that pivot, getting the 180, 180 out. But Perrin has that ability to lock in on the front peg, which is known as the toothpick. Big 180 bar spin coming out, the finishing move. And he never rushes those pullbacks, does he? Which no. is always lovely to see. So one little skip in there, where he popped off the bike. But otherwise, Anthony Perrin with a very, very solid run. And I was gonna say in the middle there, like you follow someone like Reed Stark, who's powering through, and we're gonna see Kevin Barraza coming up in a second as well, another rider who's gonna ride at Mach 10. And you could get lost there, but the tech is incredible here. So there's the Perrin signature, the front wheel balance point are such a difficult thing to do. But to be able to do that toothpick hanger up the rail, especially in the start, takes so much upper body strength and finding that sweet spot. Same thing with that toothpick 180. And take a look right here with the control on that back wheel, oh. utilizing his free coaster and coming around. Now, Perrin is originally from Lyon, but he's been living in Barcelona the last few years. Spends a lot of time with Jay Rowe from Kink. And as mentioned, he's also riding for The Cut, which is the new shop out of Barcelona. So it's just cool to see that support, but also in Lyon, he's getting cheered on by his mom, Corley. And you know his girlfriend, Emmy, is like saying, come on, Anthony, let's put it in for a solid second run. Okay, be interesting to hear now from Anthony, see what he makes of that run. Anthony, absolutely no stranger to Simple Session. 10 years already, right? Yeah, 10 years, 10 years. It's been a while. <laughs> Nice. We really wonder, like, let's talk about your run. Let's talk about the obstacles and overall, like, what were you doing out there? Uh, I don't know. I've been having fun. It's nice having the course for yourself and, like, having a different lines, trying to put it together. And it's always, like, original, like, original lines, different stuff that we don't really use to ride. So, yeah, it's always fun. Always fun, for sure. And what can we expect from you from the second run? Are you going to keep that as a secret? I don't know. Hopefully keep everything together and have fun. <laughs> well, thank you and good luck. Thank you. <laughs> so the score came in for Anthony there while he was talking. 84.66. He's bested Reed Stark by over three and a half points. So the judges loving that use, of course, loving the technical skill. All right, our next rider, Kevin Peraza, another one who is no stranger to Simple Session. He's actually a two times Simple Session champion. 2013, 2016. I know he would love to put another champion on his name with 22 next to it. Peraza is such a well-rounded rider. He has X Games gold medal both in park and dirt. That just shows how well and he can adapt to any terrain. So the Vans Mongoose rider dropping in with 60 seconds. But all of our top three qualifiers and all of the winners last year were all street orientated riders. So I feel like he's got a big mountain to climb here, but he's starting. Oh, having a little difficulty, but still that 360 tabletop was upside down over the Doritos Volcano, kicking tail in both directions right now. Nose bonk 360 over the Volcano. And look at this, Peraza showing his veteran and cool collectiveness in a finals. Downside 360 tail up over the Volcano hand plant. The on top frequency of, the Red Bull wall. of tricks is just so frenetic. We've and seen a ridiculous amount of tricks so far. Peraza being cheered on by Mama and Papa Peraza back home in the States as he is putting the gas on. Wall right to tail whip. Oh, holds on to that one. And we've still got 15 seconds left. It's like he's in a time warp. It's unbelievable because he was able to accelerate after having that difficulty. What? What? No! Kevin Peraza doing that wild off-axis 180 backflip over the volcano. It was like a corked 540, but I mean, landing that on a flat bank would have been nails. Doing it into a tight transition like that volcano. That That's utter madness. is so wild. And what's cool, Ed, we're going to see on the replay, the way that he pulls that Absolutely trick, it's so off-axis. It almost Peraza looks like that 540 upside down, but when we take a look, it's a 180, but it's the wildest looking trick. Look at the height getting completely <sighs> out of the vert wall, landing in the transition. Watch the tail whip, kicking it one way, readjusting his 
speed and great style kicking it out the other. And super clean catch. Look at the height here too, and just getting the bike inverted coming off the wall. And here we go upside down, getting the flip off axis and then getting that last rotation. Kevin showing you why he's such a well-rounded rider, why he's won this event twice before. <laughs> and there's Kevin's signature style. His wife, Itzel, is here. They've been having such a great time in Estonia. I had the chance to go out with them the other night, and he just loves Simple Session and the crowd that always back him. Okay, let's go down and hear from Kevin now. Kevin Peraza, I think I can call you a BMX superstar, and I mean, what you just showed us was pretty epic. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I don't even have words. Uh, I was a little sloppy at first. Kept it together. The energy in here with the crowd. My friends, the riders, and uh, everyone that's watching. Saludos a todos. A mi familia, a mis amigos. What else? Yeah. <laughs> you took the lead. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the crowd was just going crazy for a 180 backflip over that volcano. Do you want to talk about your tricks you were doing out there? Because, I mean, you were just flying. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, that flip 180 was like, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Am I too tired? Uh, whatever, we're at Simple Session. Let's make it happen. <laughs> nice. We're really looking forward to your second run. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Saludos. Okay, so Kevin Peraza, 92.33, moves into first place just ahead of Brock Rayford and Joe Jarvis. Only 2.33 separating uh, Brock Rayford from Peraza, and there's still some heavy hitters to come. Boyd Hilda is one of them. The Australian eating this course alive during qualifying. Yeah, Boyd Hilder is another rider who's extremely well-rounded, like Kevin Peraza. He can bring it on park, also street. I was talking with him a little bit before the contest, and he said he wanted to give a shout-out to the Pizzy Boys back home. That's because they got a brand-new skate park that's going in, a little more street plaza-oriented next to his bull park. So he's just such a well-rounded rider. Another guy who's repping for Federal out here, and let's see what Boyd can bring. He starts out with the dark side, double peg grind on the visit Estonia quarter pipe and then getting the toothpick hangover to bar spin you have to clear your back back end on that rail and right now we got the throttle going on Boyd what foot all jam. the way up in the riders and doing a foot jam finding his balance point with his foot in the tire feeble grind to bar spin Ed this is great so far <laughs> so Boyd Hilda saving it all for finals Took the win here at Simple Session in 2019 at the first time of asking. This is third Simple Session now. Oh, bar spin to Smithstall on the wall. That was such a great trick. He's actually off the course. He somehow threw his bars and he hit his front peg off the course. His back wheel was balanced on the wall and then able to pull around with the 180. That was a nice gap off the banana with the front nose manual. And a 360. Oh. Just dived off that box, rolled into it. Should get points for parkour on that one. So Boyd right there, I believe he might have been going for one of the tricks that he actually placed extremely well during our best trick contest. That's a 360 with the bar spin landing Smith with the revert out, but he had some difficulty and he sang so close, Ed, because that was in the final seconds of his run. What I love there, though, as soon as Boyd was getting up, you can tell everything you need to know about the atmosphere in this place by the fact that any of the cameras that are sat on tripods on the floor are vibrating. Yeah, and I know one place where it's vibrating more, cheering on, is around the world. Right now, Boyd's girlfriend, Bridget, is saying, Boyd, come on in your second run. Let's put it together and get it together on that 360 with the bar spin. But look right there, the Smith. Shout out to the late, great Paul Buchanan, first rider to ever do a Smith stall on a pillar. And you see right Timing's there. Timing's gotta be perfect on that because if you start falling away with the front wheel trapped over the side of the ply there. Okay, down into the uh, finish area there with Tuli Yevstignayev, she's with Boyd. Boyd Hilda, we are so happy to have you here again, 2019 winner. You have your girlfriend, Bridget, and your two little duckles waiting like, at home watching right now. Do you want to say something to them? Yeah, I love you guys and hello. But probably asleep right now. Ooh, I'm puffed. And you know, Boyd, you just took the lead. Did I? Hell yeah, thank you, everybody. I mean, I heard before that you had said that you came here to win. Is that true? Well, I wouldn't say it, but why else are we here? 
exactly. Well, good luck in the second run. Thank you. Ooh, stepping up rider by rider right now. Boyd Hilda, best Kevin Peraza. A short stop for Peraza up at the top, but there are still more riders to come. Our top three qualifiers yet to drop in BMX finals here at Simple Session 22. Courage Adams has been on fire all week. Absolutely loving watching this guy ride, Daryl. Courage doing it for Red Bull, fly bikes, vans, and animal bikes. He has been blowing minds on two wheels for the last 10 years with crazy difficult combinations. He's got such strength and power. Watch the finesse as he's able to bring that together with style. So Courage right now on course. We're going to see if he does stick to maybe a more veteran approach instead of those long combinations he's been known for. But that was a great hit, focusing with the nose manual, landing in the Smith grind with the bar spin out. Yeah, what you want to see here is a really solid, clean run from Courage that then lets him off the chain second run. Yeah, and that downside whip right there, catching it to pedals off the quarter pipes. That's a thing to note with Courage. He kicks tail whips in both directions. There is the power we saw with the 360 out of the rail. That was a great two-hit combo coming in the double peg with bar spins bookended on each side. So Courage right now kicking the cranks up, 360 bar spin down. These are going to be crucial moments with a flare. Big flare as well. A lot of daylight between him and the coping there. Here we go, Ed. This is going to be a big one. Courage up on his front wheel. Oh! oh. Was that an improvisation? I believe it might have been, but it looked great from my house. Courage going for the nose manual, going on the back wheel then, and throwing the bars right on into the bank. He's unbelievably strong, isn't he? You talked about his power. It's a baggy t-shirt, but every now and again, when the wind's blowing against it, you can see how big his shoulders and his arms are. Yeah, if you follow at all Courage Adams on his Instagram or TikTok, he's got so many fun videos, and you see his super ability strength on and off the bicycle. But let's watch right here as he does a crooked grind to bar spin. That's where his pegs are on either side of the rail. He throws the bars in the opposite direction, checks in with the front wheel on that 360 with the nose manual in between. Here's the nose manual having that Smith grind with the bonk bar spin. But Courage then came back as we talked about at the end of his run. That was such an important part where he had this flare on the Visit Estonia quarter pipe. Little nod to the park side of things after a super tech street run. But this is what we're talking about. He was trying to get that nose manual. He wasn't able to go the distance, but he showed his bike control by switching to plan B, potentially getting the manual and the bar spin out. And that's the thing. Are the judges going to mark him on what he meant to do, or are they going to mark him on what he did and just say, you know what, you still pulled nose manual, manual to bar spin. Well, Ed, we're speculating, so maybe he wanted to do that, right? We're just speculating, and a judge never wants to judge a rider against himself. Maybe we'll uh, find out. Yeah, let's find out what he wants now. He's talking to Tully. Courage, Adams. Such a multi-talent. You're such a powerful rider. You're also such a nice person. I mean, what an epic run. Let's talk about some of the tricks. What what exactly did you do up there? Uh, it's super sketchy, nolly, manual, bar spin -off. <laughs> Super sketchy. <laughs> Do you just improvise or you just uh, plan everything? Because also you took the lead. <laughs> <laughs> what, well, really? You took the lead. No, how? No. <laughs> because you're so good. <laughs> no, it's just, it was super sketchy. No. <laughs> Courage being humble as always. I mean, you're such an amazing thank rider. And thank like you. The nicest person thank ever. you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank really you. Really looking forward to the thank second you. round. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so 95.33, Courage Adams again ups the ante on top of Boyd Hilda, who did that on top of Kevin Peraza, who did that on top of Brock Rayford. Jordan Godwin now steps up to the plate. What has he got for us? Jordan repping We The People, Equa, also his own brand, Doomed. He is such a creative rider, not only with artistic abilities, but he's been pushing street riding to whole new levels, not only grinding down rails, but the way he grinds up them. We're gonna keep eyes on his foot placement. He's a rider who tends to a lot of times switch his feet. If they're in a switch stance, it makes it a lot more of a difficult trick, and he grinds on both sides, regular and his opposite side. So Jordan right now has his left foot forward. That's his traditional stance. We're going to watch as he brings a nice flowing style over the volcano and a oh, great hard grind. Beautiful. And through the kink the whole distance with a bar spin. 
That was just majestical. So we are keeping our eyes peeled. That has left foot forward. Let's see if he continues the rest of his run. Big gap, Smith grind to 180. Now, our judges have all their eyeballs peeled on the rider, so if there's something we can't necessarily right see from our house, they will definitely call it. Switched and you it saw up, that man. way yeah. he was able to switch his cranks right there to go for that crank arm slide. Quick to grind to 360 out. That is a big drop. It's about foot over handlebars. All in the details with Godwin. Ooh, there you go. You saw he switched his cranks after doing that rear wheel jam up on the sub box. So Godwin, feeble, manual, double peg, 180. Oh, the pinball multiplier there working for him, just linking, linking, linking. Now, Ed, we talked about doing something on a regular side or opposite. So if a rider, let's say, grinds on their traditional side for Jordan because his left foot's in front, his left side would be his regular, and the opposite would be his right side. That would be his non-traditional. And his last combination utilized both sides of the bike. So let's look at this. Jordan right there, nice little Pablo, Pablo Picasso-esque style of the paintbrush over the volcano, getting sideways. That was a big move. The gap to Smith grind, so much pressure on the front end, but Godwin able to just smoothly get the 180. You look at what the judges have seen over the last four riders. How, like, they're not going to know if it's Sunday or Halloween because they've had Peraza on a full park attack and then you've got Godwin on a full street attack here, like all details. And they've got to try and put a score on both of them. Yeah, now Ed, that's an interesting fact because Simple Session used to just be one event, one finals for many years. And then riding started to get so evolved in park and in street. So for a few years, we divided where there was a street final and a park final. But right now we've got them both back together and that's no easy task for the judges. Okay, let's see what Jeremy made of that run. He's down with Tule. Jordan, we had a little chat before when you said that you're always so surprised when you qualify. But I mean, we saw you linking one trick after another just out there. <laughs> that was just pretty epic, right? Uh, put it down to luck, <laughs> to be honest. I think there's a lot of talent and practice involved as well. I would, I mean, I guess. I don't really know. <laughs> Let's talk about your run a little bit. So, are you like especially proud about something? Because you said you were really surprised that you didn't crash. Uh, uh, the switch foot stuff, doing the switch foot grinds and stuff, that always, uh, it's just fun to me, I guess. And you got third place as of now. In what? Third place as of now. Oh, no, that's nice, lovely stuff. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> so, let's see your second run and let's see how it goes. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank that you lovely Julian. South Wales Thank lilt from Jordan, Jordan Godwin, 94.16 for the lad from Gwen. Interesting that it's one of the wettest places in the UK, so finding time to ride is always hard. Uh, last rider to drop in uh, of our first 15 runs, though, Felix Brangerberg, 24 years old. This man was in a different league in qualifying, but everyone has stepped up in these first finals runs. Can he keep that distance between him and everyone else? That is the big question. You see right there the Estonian rider, Martin Lanevul, just cheering on Felix as he gets ready to roll in the course, doing it for We the People, Iqua, also riding for Monster, and I say that because Ryan from Monster's TM is here cheering on as we get Brandenburg dropping in with a toothpick 180. This is a very unique way to start things out. You see the momentum on the slower side for the trick options, but the cadence at Brandenburg throwing down in the first 13 seconds is rapid fire, hitting so many different obstacles, including that over toothpick into the crowd and a 180. Unfortunately, not getting his weight in the right spot and dumping his bike off to the side. It's very uncharacteristic to see Felix fall in his run. You never so let, see that. Let's see how he winds up recovering from that. Big 180 Smith grind going up the rail, backwards tail whip. Unfortunately, looping out right there. So Felix having some difficulty two times in his run. I have a feeling he's going to wind up just kind of wasting, or excuse me, writing off the rest of the clock and just getting his composure, saving it for his final run. Obviously, being a past Simple Session champion before, he wants to give his all. He wants to have that great score. So he's going to go back out there. He's getting support from the fellow riders. It looked like it got to him there. He looked really upset about that one.
and it's difficult. You like you wear your heart on your sleeve as a rider, and you know the entire BMX community is watching this. Yeah, that was an interesting way to start things out, though. Extremely technical. Look at this right up and close with our fans in the house. Those are all of our fellow Estonian riders. They were out at the hot tub they jam. They knew it was coming, didn't they? And a little fun fact, too. Felix has been so consistent in the last few years. He actually just got bumped up to the Vans Europe Pro Team. I had a chance to talk to her on-floor MC see Andy Zeiss and he was telling me that we had Prannenberg move up to that pro team and that's such a big important thing for any rider and getting the support from vans like that is huge for Felix. Well it's a massive confidence vote isn't it from the from a brand that you're like oh they believe in me they've got this. So here are the standings after run one. Courage Adams in the lead, 95.33. Boyd Hilder in second, 94.66. Jordan Godwin in third, 94.16. Kevin Peraza, 92.33. Very, very tight. Less than three points separating those top four riders. So, And Ed, a thing I want to note, we have five riders with scores in the 90s. This is a completely different picture than we saw in qualifying. It's seeing that the game is being upped and stepped up for our final. I tell you what, them, I reckon there'll be a little bit of nerves from the judges right now because they, they might have backed themselves into a corner It's here. a very difficult thing and what Ed is talking about is judges give a score 0 to 100 and they need to have some breathing room between the points to essentially see where a rider is going to fit because not only are they judging a rider on their one run, but they have to then see how does that fit with the riders second run and also with the other 11 riders on course so we have 15 riders two runs that's 30 runs on the course and they have that difficulty of making the riding into a numeric value and where it sits it's such a difficult thing you know what we've got as well i've just been thinking about this felix prangenberg is in last place at the moment and he's going to be the last rider to drop. We've essentially backed Felix Brangenberg into a corner and that is the most dangerous place to put someone who's got his level of riding. And that's a very good point. That's why we do it in reverse qualifying order. So if you're a rider, you're almost granted that position to then realize how much do you have to give to potentially take that top spot. So some say that's an advantage point, but if a rider maybe can't handle that pressure, Felix, we know Ken, top qualifier yesterday, past champion, and if he has that ability, we're gonna see these heavyweights out there giving haymakers of scores, and potentially any order can change up to the last rider. Okay, let's take a look at highlights from the first run here. So Jordan he Godwin. On course, look at that gap to Smith grind, getting the 180, that was so smooth. So much force on that front peg as you fly across the course, but Jordan so smooth and dialed. Look at this, it's called a crooked grind because he's putting his front peg on the opposite side of the rail. And the utilizing judges both loving sides. those. We saw the switch up there where he leads with his left foot into that box and then changes up the crank, leads with his right foot out. Yeah, and it, for all of our non-BMX riders out there, if you're, or if you're new at riding, next time you're cruising down the street, switch your feet up and just see how kind of awkward that can feel. Oh, it's it's terrific. almost like using a left hand to write your name. So, or a right hand if you're lefty. But right here, Boyd Hilder going so high up on the wall, the federal rider putting his foot in that front tire to find that balance point. Look at the grind with the feeble and the bar spin out for Hilder, smooth, grabbing that LHV quarter pipe. And right there, another bar spin down, but this was one of the highlights. Love that. Bar spin into the Smith, his front wheel dangling off the side of the course. And then we saw at the end of his run, he had a little bit of difficulty. So he is gonna have some room to potentially improve. And then it's the unmistakable narrow gate of Courage Adams on the bars. I love how close his hands are. Yeah, he is such a powerful rider, and we talk about this. He definitely has been changing his approach this year to his competition. So that was a big combination, and even though he linked them together with the nose manual, when you wind up stacking multiple tricks that are linked together, balancing on your front or back wheel, the difficulty goes up, and if you wind up having a mistake, you essentially ate up all that time on the course. Years past, Courage would gamble big and sometimes going for 30 second combos. Right here we talk about the improvisational skills going up on that front wheel. 
then saying, hey, I'm not gonna get the nose manual, it's narrow up there. I'm gonna change up to plan B with the back wheel manual. And then his kind of default is a big bar spin off that sub wall. But I gotta tell you, Ed, I rode the course in practice and that is a very narrow sub to come into a very steep quarter pipe. Yeah, and the fact that your trick's not going to plan, so you're able to improvise on a 30 centimeter wide sub box, 15 feet above solid concrete. He didn't panic. Unbelievable. Right, we can go down course side now with uh, Tuliyev Stignayev. So, Simple Session is a big BMX and skateboarding party. Talking about parties, there is a Latino squad behind me who I want to hire as my personal chair squad because these guys are just epic. I mean, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> okay, calm down, <laughs> love you, calm down, let's talk a little bit, let's talk about it. Stefan, I'm going to take you. So, you didn't qualify unfortunately, but you've been in summer session as well. Yeah, yeah. So you've literally only been in simple session at summer, right? you never seen the winter one? No, I never see like the winter one, but... <laughs> You want to come for the winter edition as well when it happens one day. Yeah, but I hope you make it on summer, like, please, 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 please. So, what's going on with all you guys? Because, I mean, you are very fun. I saw you before already. Uh, you're having, like, your own private party here. We just gave, like, our energy, our, like, hype to all the riders, too, because we feel like that's the support they all they need, you know, right yeah, now, so. Yeah. And that is the best attitude. <laughs> and this is just the fucking beginning, so. Woo! Nice. See you see in Hollywood, single. See you in Hollywood! See you in Hollywood. <laughs> nice, while well, you hear it from the guys, everyone needs to go to Cal Hollywood in the evening. I want to also give a special square uh, shout out to Itze over there. Itze is Kevin Peraza's wife. <laughs> and let's see what else can we find here in the writer's area. Oh, I see Smiley. So Smiley writes for Kunstsport, he's from Germany. Smiley, you didn't qualify unfortunately this time, but watching all the writers, what is the level? I mean, I think the level is epic this year. I think it's one of the best we've ever had. The level is super crazy high. Like, we got like five riders that scored higher than 90. That's insane. That's right? Yeah, it is insane. I can't believe it. I'm so stoked for these guys. I'm really excited for the second runs as well. Yeah, they. I hope Felix doesn't crash this time and then we'll have a nice show to watch. Nice, thank you for your comments. And I saw Linda somewhere. Our only, oh, there you go, Linda. Our only female BMX rider. So happy to have you here. Uh, I mean, it's also been so fun to watch how everyone just cheers for you when you're on the course. I think you are an amazing rider. I wish there were more female riders coming to Simple Session. Why do you think people are still not coming? Or like, are the girls a bit afraid to enter this competition? Um, so first of all, thank you. Um, but actually, I didn't expect even to ride. I just came here to like watch everybody. Um, and then I got asked if I want to ride, and that's like crazy. Like, I was so excited for that. But yeah, it's like a hard because like you have to be invited or someone has to send you here. And if, I don't know, it's like, I can't even compete against those guys. It was like crazy. But yeah, I wish there was a girls contest. So maybe next year, hoping for the best, it would be really cool to get like more girls out here, have our own contest and like have the chance to ride. But yeah, I'm really thankful that I got the chance this year. But yeah, let's hope for the best for next year. Let's talk about uh, female riders and VMX in general. Uh, what is the level? Do you want to name some names or like kind of up and coming in the, in the scene right now? Um, I think especially in the street scene, like more and more girls are getting into it and like, I don't know, it's, it's crazy to see like there's this one girl like Aubrey, she's like eight or something and she's killing it in street and also, I don't know, Anae and, and Chena and there are like so many girl riders that kill it in street and I feel like if there would be a platform for us to actually show it, um, yeah, I think we can do more. 100% agree with you, girl power all the way. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's see, what else can we find back here? Or shall we just end it up with our little party squad over here? Do you uh, guys want to say something about a shout out to everyone for this evening? This is just for the fucking hype. <laughs> well, you heard it, thank you. Uh, we're gonna go for a little break now, but uh, second runs are coming up, so stay with us.
yourself, y'all. Claim yourself.
Welcome back to Tallinn in Estonia. From, I think, 1549 to 1625, Olaf's church was the Empire State Building or the Burj Al Khalifa, the tallest building in the world in the 16th century. Today, Tallinn is home to Europe's longest, longest running action sports contest. It is Simple Session. Now in its 22nd year, it enjoys a unique place in the hearts of BMXers and skateboarders. We are at the business end of the weekend, BMX finals. We've had the first run and some of the best riders in the world have stretched themselves to their absolute limit. Felix Prangenberg, number one qualifier, missed his straps on his first run. He will be last to drop on this second run and it is all to play for. No matter what anyone does in this second run, they will know that Felix is dropping last and he will have the bit between his teeth. Two-time winner, he'll be looking for his third title here, but there's a few riders in his way right now. Courage Adams is leading. And I've got to say, I went out on a limb. I think this is Courage Adams here, Daryl. Well, I told you, and you might have said I was being very politically friendly by saying it could be anybody's game, but that's... Diplomatic was well, the word it, I used. All right, well, either or. <laughs> Obviously, I'm friends with all riders out there, and I'm cheering everyone on, but I really can't stress enough, this can be anyone's game, especially with this best run format, because up to the last rider, as you said, Felix Prennenberg, the whole order could potentially shift around. I know that Courage got a 95.33 sitting in that top spot, and he even said, these are his words, not mine, that his run was sketchy, and it wasn't what he wanted to do. He was surprised being in the top, so that means that he's got more gas in the tank, exactly. and he can up the ante of his level of tricks. But I gotta tell you, Felix has looked so good, not only in qualifying, but in practice. He also can deliver under that pressure, but what we saw during our qualifying and especially in our finals, we saw the riders just getting more comfortable in the zone. And as we went through all first riders, runs, we had five riders with scores in the 90s. And these are heavyweights of BMX. And each rider was almost connecting with the haymaker of a score. And we saw just the positioning change. There'd be a new leader, a new leader, and a new leader. And I have a feeling we're going to potentially see this in our second runs Everyone because the riders got the jitters out of their first spotted. run. They're in the final. They're they feeling the flow. The and they're going to have a another opportunity to kind of piece it together. Yeah, now's the time, isn't it? Like, w whatever you've done up to this point, it doesn't matter. This second run is everything. Right. If you want to change your position, this is everything. It's also interesting because this is one of the first times where we gave the riders where we went first through 12 and they had extra time in between as opposed to separate heats to kind of regain their composure. Okay, Maxim Bespay, the Ukrainian, 30 years old, as you said, the tire riding specialist. Just phenomenal precision. Watch out for this boy. He can put this bike exactly where he wants it. Right now, dropping in, being cheered on by his parents, Tatiana and Vladimir, who also had to relocate due to the world going on from Ukraine to Barcelona. His whole family and his brother is living there. Right now going backwards with the 180 grind coming up, keeping the speed and the momentum. As we mentioned, hot off the press. Feeble grind hitting that front peg, but hot off the press, Maxim and his brother Igor both just signed on with Federal Bikes. They're one of the most core brands. As I said, I had a chance to talk to Stu Dawkins and he couldn't be more thrilled to have Federal being represented by Maxime Bispali. Coming in right now, backwards with a quick... Oh, just clipping the wall on the way out. And I've got to say, I really like Maxim's style because he's got... If you watch him, I think that precision comes from his head and his shoulders. They're so quiet on the bike. I said this in his first run, but he keeps himself so stable. Oh, there we go. That's what we were talking about. The double tire ride went, into manual. went the distance across the rail, tossed the bars, and then right there at the end, he actually, his weight was a little bit too far back, and he wound up looping out a little bit. 
So he wasn't able to keep that front end down, but let's note he's the first rider to utilize the entire length of that long rail. And that's such a difficult thing because your risk versus reward, it's totally towards the riskier side. It's hard to keep your balance on that distance. I was talking to Reed Stark before the competition. He said, even if this was filming on street and someone said, hey, try to do that rail five for five, most riders, if not all of them, wouldn't be able to because it's so long. Yeah, but this is simple session finals. Well, this is where he clips that wall. You've got to take those risks. If you're not going to take a risk now, when are you? Yeah, and Maxime definitely went for it with that double tire ride. Had the bar spin. The front wheel, as we said, wound up coming up a little bit. We know uh, Issa Bakos, the federal TM, is cheering on that run. But we're going to wind up seeing if the score will change at all for Maxime. Ladies and gentlemen, All right, our next rider, big smile on back. his face. That is Colin Varignac, 31 years right old, grew up on the East Coast, relocated all the way to the West, rides on the regular Always, with Fiend Bikes two. owner, also past Simple Session winner. I'm talking about Garrett Reynolds. Looks like we're going back right now for Maxime Vespali as we wait for his score to come in. Varignac is going to be on deck. Taking a look at our judges, Tom so, Sillins. He started with the 73-3-3 on that first run. 77.16, so it is an improvement, but it won't change the rank. Maxime Vespali stays in 12th position. So next up, 14th place, Colin Varignac. Definitely not the run he was looking for. He's on a 67.66, so a lot of work for Colin today. All right, the Adidas 510 Terex rider coming in strong with a 180 backwards grinding and then getting the bar spin out. That was really technical to do. Gonna give a shout out to Nigel Sylvester, one of the first riders to ever do that way back in the day. And now Garrett Reynolds has that trick on lock and you can see the, the influence as he does a bar spin, double peg grind and kind of saving it right there with the foot plant off because he was able to keep the momentum going. 180, yes. out clean. Love that. You pulled that off in qualifying and it worked so, so hard for him. Now that's a what difficult thing to do to thread the needle going backwards through the banana and he got that full hop into the transition. Nice style right there on the ski jump, grinding up the side. You see he gets a smooth tuck. Right there is a double peg with a bar spin 180. Smith grind to nose bonk, trying to grab that extra little transition. It's time, he had that one foot down, but it was way, way less than we saw in the first run. So, I mean, it's still not 100% the run he was looking for, but it will be a big improvement. Yeah, and as mentioned, Katie, his mom, and Kevin, his dad, are definitely psyched to see on the main stage, Varignac getting out here with some great style. Going backwards through the banana, that was one of the more difficult tricks we've seen of the competition. So take a look right now as you see backwards with that crooked grind coming over, having to clear that front wheel with the bar spin. Take a look, backwards double peg and getting a full 360 off. I had a chance to talk with Tom Sillins, one of the judges from Riga, Latvia, and he was just highlighting how difficult Colin's tricks are. That's incredible, isn't it? I love that one. Yeah, I just mean, to go in transition backwards. Unreal to see. So I'm impressed with Colin's riding here, especially who's got the bike control. We talk about how physically sharp he is. He's such an athlete, puts a lot of time into his mind and body being ready for the competition. And he definitely brought it with those hard tricks. Yeah, I want to know uh, when we speak to Thule, who I know is with him down in the corner there, whether or not he chose that Estonian themed colorway from Adidas for this contest. Colin, you're such a stylish rider. What an improvement from the first run. Let's talk about that. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm just really excited to be out here after, you know, I know everyone had a rough couple of years. It's just good to be back out here with all my friends riding. Everyone is killing it right now, literally. So just, you know, trying to feed off the vibes, everyone, you know? Well, talking about vibes, uh, was it a on purpose or by accident that you have the Estonian uh, flag colors as your outfit? This was like an accident on purpose. I, I found it in my wardrobe and my friend Maddie was like, yo, you need to wear that Estonian color. So well, I'm out here. Love you guys. Great choice. Give it out to Colin. Have a good one.
So Colin Varignac improves his score from that 67-66 up to a 75-33, but it won't change his ranking. He slots in just behind Maxime Bespali again. Alvaro Esquivel, what a legend this guy is. He's currently in 14th on a 68-66. Colombian cheer crew going absolutely berserk for the Costa Rican. 72-hour flight from Costa Rica. Had the two bad crashes in practice and at the jam, riding with bruised ribs, looking unbelievable in the final. We're watching a dream come to fruition in real time. Getting that unbelievable balance on the front wheel. There you go with the 180. And let's also take note, he has the ability to balance and turn in both directions. Bunny hop bar spin, double tire ride, tail whip off, slipping his pedal a little bit, but able to recover and get that G turn with the full pop across our visit Estonia driveway. It's getting so busy. Come on, hold it. Looking for a place to put his wheels. Hang oh, five! Oh, yes! And that was exactly, you said to him he was hunting from the end of that manual for something. Incredible run from Alvaro Esquivel. Yes, big tower what kicking it around. What a boss. Shout out to Costa Rica riding for Kenneth Tencio's bike shop down there. As we said, the scene is very intimate and support from fellow riders. Alvaro said he couldn't just shout out one friend because there's so many, but he did want to give a lot of shout and big love to his mom, Sandra Esquivel. None of this would be possible without her support. Take a look at the rider who is representing Colt. I know Robbie Morales is so pumped because this is the Costa Rican Colt representative on the front wheel, balance, and then getting that full spin popping into the transition. I almost feel like we're, we've come from park through street and into a little bit of flat land here with the Alvaro. Yeah, and the good thing about this is he's able to find a spot to place his wheels, and he said, you know what, I'm just gonna put the front wheel with the hang five and jump into the transition. Because a judge doesn't want to see a rider do a trick just to flat or flat land on the ground, because it means that they're not necessarily utilizing the course, but Alvaro found that ledge, hopped on, and was able to get the hang five. Look at him waiting patiently for his score. He knows this could be a good one. And I also want to note, he's such a warrior. Had two bad crashes, any other rider would have been sidelined he has bruised ribs. He went down a rail, peg slipped off, and just smashed his ribs on a rail. I'm so proud of him. 74.16. It doesn't move the ranking from 14 because both Colin Baranyak and Maxim Bespali have improved ahead of him. But he can be so, so proud of that run. It was an absolute scorcher. And I bet you Courage Adams watched that. You said that Courage Adams had kind of let the impossible combos go. Courage Adams would have been watching that thinking, Ooh, should, I? should I bring back the impossible combos? Okay, now it's the turn of Jackman Hins, the Australian, ready to get some work done out here. Well, let's see if Jackman digs deep and has his alter ego, James, come out. We saw him on the dance floor a little bit, but the wild man right now turning things up as he winds up nose manualing down the rail, the Federal Bikes Vans Rider bar spin to double peg. I really love Jackman's riding because it just almost looks so trails influenced. And again, I mentioned that where it's an emphasis more on flow and style. Even though he has four pegs on his bike, he almost looks like a rider who has no pegs because the way he even threw the cadence of the bar spin to bar spin back, it just shows his comfort in the air. Came off just a tiny bit early on that rail. Nice, Jackman right there checking in with the no-hander coming in fakey. And you see the bike control getting a little lost, gonna wind up waving it off for his final 10 seconds. Do you think he wanted that tail whip fakie again? It felt like it, there were a couple of little bits in there that maybe hadn't gone the way he wanted. Yeah, it's always difficult too, because also if a rider knows maybe their first run was going better than their second, they weren't gonna be able to up the score. Not that they, hey, they don't care about the second run, but you know, there's a lot of energy out here and he might have just waved that off. Yeah. But look at that big flare. Visit Estonia quarter pipe, popping out, double tire ride with the bar spin, coming down, threading the needle on that front wheel. And that's that trail style I was talking about, the toboggan, and then tossing the handlebars, pinching the seat, beautiful right there.
off a little bit early on that one, and I wonder if that was where the concentration and the focus went. It might went. have, because you saw that almost written on his face a little bit when yep. he came off and got a little bit. Okay, well, Jackman is down with Thule now. Let's hear what he thinks about that run. <laughs> Well, Jackman, uh, you're now having some killer combinations. And I heard Daryl just say that you have some kind of an alter ego called James. Who is that? <laughs> That's just Kevin messing with my little in middle name. It's funny. But whatever, it's all fun. It's is, good. is James someone who comes up when you go to Hollywood after the contest? Yeah, yeah it's quite funny. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> are, you, are you going to Hollywood after the contest? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'll be there for sure. I'm so glad so. That's good. <laughs> but this was the best time. Like, everyone's so great. They run so good. It's good. It's amazing. Well, this was your first time at Simple Session. We're really happy to have you here. What is your overall impression of the competition and also the after hours of the Simple Session? I think it's just great. Like, the vibe is always so good. Like, parties after, everyone just having out, like, hanging fun. It's good. I love it. <laughs> it's great. Very happy to hear you. I hope you come back in the future. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jackman Hins. Next in, Santiago Laverde, the 23-year-old. An absolute beast out on this course. Look at him. He can't wait to get stuck into this. Yeah, Santiago, another rider who has just been really soaking up talent Estonia, making the most of his time out here. Originally from Medellin, but living in Barcelona the last few years and going high up the wall with the double bar spin. Look at that 360 tabletop, a thing of beauty as he lays the bike all the way to the side. The kink rider building up momentum into the banana, jumping out, losing his bearings a little bit with that manual. Let's see if he can regain composure. Rank arm slide to bar spin. That was extremely smooth, Ed. Downside tail whip on the visit. Estonia caught up. Tooth pick, drop it into that crank arm slide. Come on, Santiago. You see him look over his shoulder, spot in traffic, and his line with the bar spin up. Suicide no hander back. Still got 15 seconds on here. Lot he can do on this side of the course. Ten seconds. He surfs his way through there. Yeah, that's the style right there. Even just rolling through the course. Double bar spin, 180 bar spin. And I think that might have been a little improvision as well, but that was awesome how he was able to have that bike control and showing the swerve through the rollers. It's just, that's the style. Even just rolling the course when a rider can make it look good, and that's what Santiago Laverde. Yeah, the Colombians are up in the rafters, waving those flags. Santiago points to the crowd. Joe Jarvis straight in there to give him a quick hug. Ed, and I'm also, while we watch the highlights, gonna take this opportunity to say anybody watching around the world, we want you here next year. You could be here with the Colombians cheering on our riders in the final. Simple Session is open to the entire action sports community, and you could be one of the ones saying, yes, Santiago, that was an awesome crank arm slide to bar spin. Take a look, pinch in the seat with the knees to keep in that front end up, as opposed to a tuck no-hander where you put the bars in the lap. And right here the double bar spin so much going on and i want to highlight that that quarter pipe is only two inches off the wall so to even get your tires and hit them and be able to turn around is difficult let alone a double bar spin it's worth saying as well you were talking about coming out here and joining in at simple session there's no airs or graces this isn't football tennis or formula one everyone is rubbing shoulders with the riders and they are so relaxed out here it really is uh, all for one and one for all. So Santiago Laverde, an 82 on his second run, shifts up one gear into eighth position ahead of Reed Stark. So big moves there from Santiago Laverde, cementing his position in the top 10, at least for now. A couple of riders still to go though. Felix Prangenberg behind him, Stu Chisholm behind him, Reed Stark yet to drop, as is Joe Jarvis. The shirt is off, the boy means business. Here we go, the big brawler, Joe Jarvis on course, crooked grind, federal bikes, bar spin out of a double peg grind. We talk about Jarvis's height and size. He definitely uses that to his advantage, but he winds up lightly. hopping out of that tail whip, excuse me, hopping out of the double peg to a tail whip, throwing a far one on the quarter, going up on the front wheel. Let's see, Ed, can he keep the consistency? First time he's dropped it. But still, that was great. He could hop back to the pedals, 
wouldn't get necessarily as many points, Full but if you can keep rolling, that's important. And it looks like he's got himself back in the zone again. Yeah, really great use of the elevated part of the course as you're actually able to flow and pump out of that 360 and smoothly come back in. Jarvis, big 360. Back end of this is actually cleaner. Oh, the X up pegs. Let's see if he can keep it going. Final 10, bunny hop bar. Jarvis, let's get it. Hang 10, hang 10. Yeah, hang 10. You see Three, the toes right off the two, front of the board, one. AKA pegs right there. Double peg up. 180, 360 out of a double peg grind for Jarvis. Absolutely packing that run to the gunnels. There was no space in there for any more tricks, but you can see the frustration from Joe Jarvis. He knows how close he was. He's on an 86. If he could have kept that clean all the way through, it would have pushed to 90s, I think. Ready, ready, ready. Yeah, Jarvis right there. Always the big smile on the face, the life of the party. He's been all week. He actually had a really bad crash early on at one of our jams. He wasn't able to ride, but that didn't stop him from turning it up at the hot tub jam. He was prominently placed in the hot tub, having beverages oh, the entire time. We were jumping over him, having such a fun jam. And right now, Jarvis trying to move up from the sixth place last year. But this was my favorite part of his entire run, how he had that 360 and smoothly kept his momentum to turn around on the quarter pipe and come back down. That just shows you that the Federal Riders got this bike control where he's in charge of what he's doing. <laughs> and right there, Jarvis showing you that he's one of one. <laughs> It's a big smile for Joe Jarvis, enjoying himself, but the second run won't best that first run score. 86 for Joe Jarvis, holds him at least for now in sixth place. Next up, fellow countryman out of Hastings in the south of England, Stu Chisholm. He's got a young daughter that he's out there doing it for. I think she's 14 months old. So, new addition. He's done the hard yards. Well, right now, Stuart Chisholm representing Source BMX. Tom Creasy is raising his Love beer that. in Stuart's honor as he throws a bar spin to Manuel. Checking in on top of the coping with the hand plant. High speed for Chisholm turning up the throttle as he tail whips oh, yes. over the rail this time. And then holds on to that, blocks his way into the barrier to slow things down. Chisholm on an absolute heater. Double bar spin 180. You can hear the support of the Estonians cheering on our UK rider. Come on, Stuart, you got 28 seconds. That's a lot of time to work with. We saw Kevin Peraza was able to regain composure. And right now, our simple session, first time rider, Stuart Chisholm. Uh, I thought he was gonna get back on the horse, but so impressed with Stuart Chisholm. First time here, loving simple session, and I gotta say, so impressed with him. I'm gonna go out on a limb here, Darrell. I'm gonna say he had a podium run in the palm of his hand there. For the first 30 seconds, it was right there, he could touch it. I could definitely back that statement. I was thinking the whole time who might potentially surprise everyone on the podium, and that would have been Stuart Chisholm, because he is such a talented rider. As mentioned, he cut his chops at the Source Park in Hastings, the world's largest underground skate park, where he learned this moves is magic. like that tail whip over the rail. And right here, wall ride coming in with that fakie. As mentioned, the Source is the best BMX mail order. They can get needs and goods everywhere. And I say that because Stuart actually worked at the Source as a customer service rep for many, many years. And you can call them up and get words of wisdom from riders like Stuart. Okay, we can head down course side now. Tully is with Stu. Stu, first time at Simple Session, you are so fast, you are flying so high. <laughs> I mean, no wonder because you're from the UK, UK BMX Mecca Hastings, right? Yeah, that's it, yeah man. Just happy to be here, thanks for having me. It's been so good just being here, honestly. I'm glad I got some stuff done and just showed my face, so thank you. <laughs> Is there anything you want to say about Simple Session? Because it is your first time, and I think when people come here, then everyone has like a, pretty much like the same impression. Yeah, it's just wild. Since I got it, it's just been wild, like unbelievable, so surreal. So, yeah, amazing. Well, thank you for that. Thanks for having me. 
Wow, well, so Stuart Chisholm right there. You heard being mentioned Battle of Hastings. That's another core BMX event happening at Source Park in September 9th through 11th. You can see Stuart Chisholm and all the Source boys at the park. But right now we are going back to our defending champion, Brock Rayford. Currently in fifth place, he's got a 90. The judges use this as a kind of barometer of the first of the big guns. Where's Brock Rayford gonna take this run? He's one of the riders who could really step this up. All right, Rayford on course, double peg to 360. We talk about how powerful he is. Last year, he used that to his advantage because the rails were actually a lot steeper on the course, and he was one of the only guys that had the power to grind up them consistently. This year, they're a little bit mellower, so we're gonna see if he winds up changing his approach because a lot of other riders are doing some signature Brock up grinds to threes. Right there, though, very nice style on that Smith to Nosebach. Rayford down with the double peg, 180. So 23 seconds left. You mentioned tempo earlier, Ed. Let's see if he's going to wind up just keeping the rhythm and maybe even pick up the pace. Here we go. Swinging for the fences again. Yes! This time stepping it up with the tabletop. Not even at a revisit Estonia wall ride. He was in the rafters, and Rayford just leaned over for a nice tabe. Kicking that tail whoop that was in his non-traditional direction, aka opposite, and then throwing down a cool version of a flat spin flare 540 somewhere in the mix. And look at all of our riders just going wild for our defending champion. Flair might have been a second or two after time, but definitely a heavy, heavy run. You can see right there, Austin Augie. He's another BMX rider, but he's here doing duty for Dig BMX Magazine, shooting photos. He gave a pound. That's because his Dawn of the Streets event that happens in New York City, Rayford won last year. He'll be back there again in August, so look for that event, Dawn of the Streets. But take a look at Rayford backwards, getting the full 360. Unbelievable to have that bike control off the sub box. Double peg out of the ski jump with the 180. And right here, laying over the table, trying to get it completely folded and holded, dropping out of the rafters. And Rayford kicking that opposite tail whip. You saw the way that he had to bring his front foot to the back of the bike, kicks it with the seat and almost has a little bit Van Homan-esque style. Shout out to one of the best street riders, Van Homan. You can see that your influence right there is being lived on with Rayford, doing that justice proud of the downside web. Okay, Brock Rayford's down with Tooley. Let's see what he thought of that run. We knew he was gonna bring something heavy. Brock Rayford, the defending champion. So let's talk about your second run. Do you think you're gonna improve your score? Um, there's definitely a couple things I wish I could have done better, but I opted on a few of the bigger things, so it's, um, it's up to the judges at this point, but I'm just feeding off the energy of everybody else here. You know, you guys see it, whether you're here in person or watching it online, you see how crazy it's going, so it's so fun to feed off of that and ride with my homies. You spoke about the Brotherhood of Simple Session last year when we were having a chat. Let's talk about that a bit more today. Yeah, I mean, you can see it. I'm sure they show it after each of these guys runs. We all hug each other. We all take care of each other, no matter if it's the best run of your life or maybe you could have done better. It's all one big family, and it's so cool to be a part of that, not only here in Estonia, but globally around the world. BMX is the best. I fully agree. And you took the fifth rank. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brock. Okay, so Brock Rayford improving by just 0.66, so it doesn't change his position. There are two riders behind him, Anthony Perran and Reed Stark, who could yet overtake him as alongside, don't let me forget, Felix Prangenberg right down there in 15th place. So three riders who could yet shift Brock Rayford down the rankings. Reed Stark is one of them. The big boy, let's see what he's got. All right, the Minneapolis long boy being cheered on by Koshi and the 10 Lake Crew back home in Minneapolis right now. Reed Stark putting the throttle on, getting the far distance on that gap. The only rider we saw be able to generate enough speed to fly almost 20 feet across the course. Look at the way he utilized both sides of the pegs going through the banana. Oh, new line there from Reed Stark. And he had the ice pick on the way down. So Reed Stark is looking to up his score and watch the way that he pumps through all the nooks and crannies of this Nate Wessel design course, bonking the front wheel, coming over the volcano, great tabletop, 
laying it over. Smith stall on the pillar. Reed right now, 20 seconds to go. Peeling back the throttle, getting the wall ride. Come on, Reed. Threading the needle on that one. It's so difficult to find the speed and get through between that King's rail into the takeoff. GSD, Etnies feeling real proud for the Safari rider. Getting that fakie on the pillar. Talk about utilizing the entire course. Ice pick. Not able to get the final rollout, but that was around the buzzer. And look at I this. I think he was off the time, yeah. Reed Stark, a total crowd favorite. Ed, we talk about it. If a rider has a crash or a bobble at the end, obviously it's going to be a little bit better than it happening at the beginning. But Reed Stark had a very, very solid run out there. So Reed Stark peeling back the throttle. He had it all. High speed, technical not only grinds, but technical lines, like jumping to that stage, that's over 20, 25 feet. Look at that Smith stall. I'm gonna give a shout out again to Paul Buchanan, first rider to ever go up on the pillar. There you see, rather than doing a fakie wall ride, he did a fakie pegs, and then right here showing how much bike control he has on that big sub box, sliding the back peg into the wedge. I mean you, obviously, call me out if you think I'm wrong, but I think the 81 he got for the amount of unique lines and that creative approach he had to the course, I think he was a little bit under. I'll be interested to see if the judges have had time to think about that and make amends. Yeah, he's got a lot of room to go up. His score was really impressive. And again, he just had that little bobble at the end, but I'm interested like you, Ed. Okay, Reed's down with Tully now. Reed Stark, the absolute crowd favorite and legendary simple search rider. <laughs> I mean, you had a really good run, a small pebble in the end though. Yeah, man, I mean, I've done that every single time. It was just a little bit slippery this time. I don't know what happened, but it's good stuff. I'm happy I did the switch peg spaky. Just figured that out in practice right before this, so it's hyped. Nice. Well, you don't only have tricks on the course. Last year, it's a pretty epic trick here, <laughs> live. Do you want to show us something else this year as well? <laughs> Shout out, sweet kendamas, man. Uh, let's see. Let's see what you do on a kendama. <laughs> oh, first try. Oh, oh it's OK. <laughs> Come on, give it up to Reed Stark. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Well, good thing Reed Stark got it done on the course. Had a little trouble with his Kendama move that he was trying to pull, but... I'm not surprised. He's just on a minute of flat-out BMX. But 84.16 for Reed doesn't move him out of eighth. So next up is Anthony Perrin, who sits in seventh position. And the Frenchman, no doubt about it, he's got room to move. Yeah, Anthony right here, watch for that power on the front peg. That was that toothpick hanger, nose manual down, starting his runoff similar to his first, but again, since it's the best run format that counts, that is gonna be that perfection the judges wanna see. And right now, Perrin is really graceful with these powerful moves. Bar spin, getting that double peg, changing his foot placement on that nose manual. And look at the way that Perrin is just in control. Even though he's riding at a slower pace, he's confident. He's just holding assurance and working through as he does that 180 backwards nose manual off the ledge. It's immaculate, isn't it? So right now, the kink rider. Yes, getting that toothpick with the 180 coming out. You see how he has to clear his back end over. Yeah, backwards manual, looking good. Absolutely glorious. It's perfect. It's as close to perfect as you can get. Precision BMX from Anthony Perran. Start to finish, that was a minute of some of the tidiest, cleanest BMX riding you are likely to see. Yeah, and I can't overstate how difficult that toothpick hanger going up the rail is that he started. I know that that rail necessarily isn't the largest visual looking rail, but you gotta find that balance point and you're putting your weight over your handlebars and you're hoping that you get a consistent slide and Perrin has his back end completely sideways gets it smooth and able to set up for that nose press 180. Look at the style, checking in with the toboggan floatener, nose manual 180 up the ledge, and then right here, you're seeing that signature Perrin on the front peg, committed over the handlebars, and then this was a beautiful move backwards with the manual, and then touching down 
perfectly both wheels at the same time. It's such incredible composure, isn't it? And then that was a big way to end it. 180 bar spin, and you see he has the free coaster on his bike, so he's able to go backwards without his cranks engaging. Just smooth, smooth, smooth for Anthony Perry. Okay, 84.66 is his score at the moment. Joe Jarvis is on an 86 ahead of him. So he's got to improve by just over one and a half points. And he's done that with his 86.91. So he leapfrogs Joe Jarvis into sixth position. Can't reel in Brock Rayford on that 90.66. But now we have our top four riders ready to go. Kevin Peraza, Boyd Hilda, Courage Adams, and Jordan Godwin all ready to go. They're in the top four. And then Felix Prangenberg in 15th place will be the last man to drop. Peraza on course, though. Oh, there you go. Inverted 360 tabletop. Peraza double pegged to bar spin, stuffing his front wheel into the wall. Tail whip in one direction, kicking the tail whip in the other. Nose bonk 360 over the volcano. Peraza right now is riding like a past Simple Session champion, and that's because he is. He won the event two times, and he'd love to make it a third. Hand plan on top of the wall. Kevin at that halfway mark in his run. And Ed, it's unbelievable oh, to think of how many tricks. How many tricks he's crammed in. Even though he missed that decade, he still has more tricks than almost any other rider with 18 seconds to go. Oh, and he's got the tail whip off the wall right there. Is he going to go through the gears and try and squeeze in that big toe jam that we saw? 180 backflip, and then just looping out with so much force on his spin. You see him falling right down to his butt, but popping up to his feet, and the roaring applause from Aristonians are showing the appreciation for Peraza. Now, if there is a trademark of Kevin Peraza, it's that smile. Absolutely is. The it's, smile. It's always there. No matter how he rides, no matter what happens, Kevin Peralta has that stoke, has that joy. It's the smile and the style. There's his wife, Itzel. They've been traveling all over Europe together. They were in Montpellier a few weeks ago, and it's great to see that support. Also, you talk about style. Peraza right now is actually rocking brand new artwork for a Vans 114 line that he has came out June 1st. All of his artwork and designs inspired by Tucson and growing up. He's such a creative writer. Juani Zarita's out here filming videos and you can check out on his Instagram just some of the behind the scenes of the adventures that he had with his wife Itzel all over Europe and right there hitting that wall right to tell him and then somehow getting a 360 afterwards. Peraza really is just showing you why he's such a top rider. When the pressure's on, he thrives in that situation. Unfortunately though, he did have those couple of crashes and obviously that's gonna bring down that score. Okay, let's hear from Kevin. Kevin, it's such a joy to watch you ride. I mean, you're pulling some pretty epic tricks there. <laughs> Thank you, you know, um, I'm very blessed and lucky to do what I love for a living, so it's always a good time. All my friends are killing it, the energy's high. Simple session's a good time, what can I say? And you scored war fourth just now. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's cool, yeah. I wish I would've landed last trick, it is what it is. I'm healthy, I gotta go home healthy. Absolutely, and you're also enjoying Tallinn here at summertime with your wife Itza. What have you guys been up to in Estonia? You know, now that Simple Session's in the summer, the weather's absolutely beautiful, you know, so walking around Old Town, eating super good, coffee shops, just enjoying the time, really. It's, it's so crazy how late the sun goes down, though. It's so different, <laughs> but uh, it's beautiful. My wife and I have been having a great time in Europe, and uh, I'm happy to be back in Tallinn. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin Peraza. So, three riders left to drop who are all in the top three, and one rider, first place qualifier, who is currently sat in 15th. Felix Prangenberg with it all to do. Boyd Hilda is currently in second on a 94.66. If he can find another 6.6, a uh, 0.66, then he will move into first, and that is not beyond the Australian. First place within reach for Boyd Hilda. The Pizzy boys back home are cheering on Boyd Hilder as he starts things off. Gets that toothpick hangover with the bar spin. Also representing Odyssey. 
Here we go, a lot of gas. Foot jam high on the wall again in the rafters. Let's see if Boyd can keep the momentum as he feeble grinds. Smith, bar spin. Ed, this is where he could potentially get those extra points because throwing that Smith in instead of just the bar spin. Ooh, just hung on to that one. That is where you could potentially up the ante. So Hilder right now working it out. Bar spin to Smith, somehow keeping it together. Rubber side down with the tires almost slid out. You saw how surprised he was on his face, but let's see if he can keep it together for crucial 10 seconds. Yeah, he's got the last slither of hope here. He's had some really good add-ons, but he's also had a little sketch. Oh! Yes! Getting the 360 to Smith grind. Foot plant off the wall with the 360. Boyd Hilder said he came here to win. He spent the last month on the road away from his girlfriend, Bridget. He said, if I'm gonna come out, I gotta make it count. And I know everybody back home is so hyped that Boyd got that 360 to Smith done. Okay, so second place. Look at Jarvis yelling over the barriers at him. Bruno Hoffman's there as well. I'm getting messages coming in from the Odyssey family. Nuno Oliveira, Jim Bauer are so hyped that Boyd Hilder is repping with tech combos like that hangover toothpick to bar spin. But look how high in the rafters, dropping all the way down almost 10 feet into the quarter pipe. This was key for his run because he had the ability to put that Smith grind in before the bar spin. As we said, if you can stack tricks, the difficulty goes up. But watch his front tire almost sliding out, almost is the key word, because then Boyd was able to keep his speed flying off the with this 360 and then booyah getting the smith his front wheel double dribbled a little bit yeah but you know that really isn't that big of a deal it looks more because we saw it in slow-mo right there unbelievable no other riders doing that in his first run he wound up crashing at the end so these could potentially be those key points you were talking about okay let's hear from boyd he's with Thule now Boyd Hilder, you have the most amazing energy on and off the course. And let's hear it for now because you took the lead. Oh, yes, it feels good. Honestly, listen to the crowd, they're going off. I'm high, boys. Thank you. 97.5 for Boyd Hilder. That is absolutely massive. Courage, Adams. Massive. That's crazy, Boyd. Oh, I'm stoked on that. Thank you. Oh. Congratulations. That's so cool. <laughs> Okay, three riders left to drop. Courage Adams has just had the lead stolen from him. He is the next rider to drop. It's going to be truly, truly phenomenal, this one, Daryl. And as we said, these are heavy weights of BMX. We are seeing Haymakers swing and connect with the judges. Courage Adams on course. Look at the energy he's got. The judges are about to have a nightmare with this one. Courage setting up. Where is he going? Front wheel, Smith bonking with the bar spin. Very smooth and consistent, two for two. He pulled that in his first run. His courage comes back, crank getting that arms. crank arm slide with the bar spin. 180 backwards, nose manual, getting the revert out, kicking that downside whip. Courage right now hitting that halfway mark. He's gotta be consistent, Ed. Look at it, so, so clinical. We are seeing a completely different Courage Adams in 2022. He wants to move up that ladder. Come on, Courage. Truck driver, that's that 360 with the bar spin. Popping in with the flare and sticking it clean. 10 seconds left to go. What's he got? Is he going up on top again? Yes, he is. Oh! Spat out of the front on that nose manual. Oh, that oh. is frustrating. That's what we talk about, risk versus reward. You saw how committed Courage was to that nose manual across the sub box. The factory here in Puhala, it's an older building and there's a lot of dust in the air. That's very slippery on top of that deck. We actually saw in qualifying Courage wound up trying to clean some of that dust off. He wound up going a little bit wide, clipped his pegs on the wall, and not only did that nose manual slip away, but those points slipped out of his fingers from the judges. Thankfully, he's okay after going over the bars down that enormous bank. Love it, though. Love watching Courage Adams ride it. He was all in. And I was going to say, I didn't want to jinx it, but the way he rode through that first 30 seconds, 
there was a sense of destiny to his run. Yeah, I mean, courage so close to making it happen, but we talk about perfection being needed out here. Courage looked great. As we said, totally different approach for Courage 2022. And Love I that crank flip it. on the way in. Yeah, I mean, just kicking the pedals around. This flare right here, visit Estonia, drop in the shoulder, landing pretty high up, close to that hoping to get speed, but unfortunately not enough with that nose manual. Oh, he looked ruefully back up at that sub box. So, run one, 95.33, run two, with that fall, a 94.33. He will watch that back and know what might have been. Oh, he's going back for it. This is just for us. Oh, oh. fully committed into that one. Oh, he took that one on all of his major organs. The phenomenon known as winding. He's just trying to get some air in, I think. Yeah, he might take in the bars across the top of the femurs as well. All right, looks like Courage is going to hopefully get up right here on his own accord. Courage. Taking a breather, he just had that long 60 second run, getting into this potential bar spin out of a nose manual. Look at the balance point and then committed and you saw right there his weight was too far over the handlebars. That's such an awkward angle coming in with that pillar. But I gotta give so much respect and love to Courage Adams. Talk about putting on not only a great show, as you said, his score even with the crash was in the 90s. And the fact that he wound up having a 94.33 with that crash and then going for the nose man at the bar spin for the fans, for us, much respect, courage. Courage by name, courage by nature. That boy is something special. One year it will come for him. This year is not gonna be his year. Still second place at the moment, but we have two riders left to drop. Jordan Godwin is yet to come in, and that man right next to Courage right now, Felix Prangenberg, first place qualifier, is yet to drop. Jordan Godwin is currently guaranteed a top four finish. If he wants to guarantee a top three finish, he is gonna have to improve on a 94.16 by at least 1.2 points. Yeah, I know Jordan Godwin would love to be on the podium, maybe even on top, but we are gonna find out in the next 60 seconds. Look at that style, lofting sideways, grabbing behind the seat. Oh no, Godwin having some trouble. But look as he kicks that tail whip. I believe that was in his opposite direction. He's got to put that first little slip behind him. Again, let's note Godwin's feet. He's got his left foot forward. Big gap to Smith, this time throwing in the 180, getting that back end, the caboose over the end of that ledge. Crank arm slide up, and watch, that's what we said. He switched his foot placement, so he was able to then crank arm on his opposite non-traditional side, coming down with the 180. Godwin, crooked grind, 180 as well. We just see him switching left and right, doing things on regular and opposite side. Right foot forward now. Left foot forward, Godwin putting on a tech demo on how you can push BMX 2022 to all new levels and a 360 out of that double head grind. Ed, I just want to highlight as well, Godwin throws things down at such a rapid pace. If we don't necessarily see something from our perspective in our announcing booth, regular opposite, our judges' six eyeballs definitely will. We don't have any say on what the we judges call or what they do, and Godwin is so progressive, but I know Tom Sillins, also Marcus Vilke, and Dave Cleworth really put a big focus on that. We the People, Doomed Rider, it's his own clothing brand. Look at that Smith, he's got to get set up, bringing his weight in the proper position to then get that 180. He did so well to put that pedal slip behind him from the first, first lap. I know, and right now the Wales Rider, you see the right foot in front, that is on his non-traditional stance. I can't stress enough how difficult that is. If you're a righty, try writing your name with your left hand or vice versa. It's so difficult to do. And Tim Ward once described it as trying to write left-handed while wearing a chip hat and being attacked by seagulls. I think that's a very accurate way to say because if all goes wrong, you can potentially crash as well. Okay, Jordan Godwin is with Tully now. 
So Jordan, I mean, you are pulling some pretty epic tricks out there, and I just asked you if you feel you improved your run, and you're just so humble that you don't think so, but we all think so, right? Uh, I did put a foot down, so probably not, but I did do a switch whip, which is rare. <laughs> What is your general opinion of In Simple Session as well? Like, what's the vibe and all the friendships here? Uh, insane. The atmosphere is wild. Party is obviously wild. And everyone's just having a good time. And uh, you took the third place. You stayed in the third place. Probably not, because... You did? Oh. Oh, I did. But I won't be for long, because he's going. <laughs> well, we'll see. Well done, either way. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jordan Godwin called it there. He knows that this man, the last man to drop, could spoil his podium party. Right now, Boyd Hilda in first place. Felix Prangenberg in 15th place. Dead last after his first run. He has it all to do. Can he put that first run behind him? Can he eat this pressure for breakfast? Well, right now, Prennenberg starting off very unorthodox as he gets technical and checks in one more time with our crowd over Toothpick. And right now, coming back in, fast plant over the rail. Prennenberg, such a talented rider, but he's got the power with the tech and the finesse. That's how you put those three together to do a 180 backwards down the sub, this time going up with a 180 Smith. And he's getting the tail whip going backwards with the clean button. Hop, but he also had the bar spin in. Prennenberg knows it's going to take a lot of magic to beat Boyd Hilder's 97.50, and Ed, he is on one right now. Yeah, the energy in the Poyala factory here is getting behind him. Prangenberg absolutely on a scorcher. Here we go. 540, very smooth on that rollout. Time for a last thought for Prennenberg. Feeble with that 180, popping the flare, putting a foot down. I think that flare was potentially after time. Look at that, he's brought the Poyola factory to its feet. A phenomenal ride from Prangenberg, but is it enough to unseat Boyd Hilda? Hilda straight over there to congratulate Prangenberg. It's all up to the judges now. Felix has done everything that he could. This is one of those high pressure moments and stressful for our three judges. There is so much pressure on them to put a numeric value to Prennenberg's riding. Look at this, right up and personal. Talk about having the best seats in the house for our fans in Puhala. And look at that hitting the front peg, dark side on the undercarriage, and then getting that foot plant right over the rail backwards and let's not forget that he had that beautiful tuck at he just got the perfect body position right here bar spin traveling backwards bunny hop with a tail whip getting it clean and popping back around 360 visiting estonia and then hitting that 180 and getting the cab for the spin i mean that was unbelievable tech and then i just want to highlight this 540 to flat and watch how smooth he landed with his body weight to the side and just had that perfect rotation even when his tires touched down to continue the spin okay it's a 97.5 for boyd hilda felix prangenberg has that number in his sight tuliev signayev is talking to uh, felix now Felix, I'm so, so, so happy for you. I mean, you were just killing it there. Failed the first run, second one, you were just really giving everyone the run for the money. Do you think it's enough to beat Boyd 97.5? I don't think so. <laughs> Boyd fucking killed it. I don't think I can beat that, so I hope he got it. <laughs> well, let's see. We're waiting for the scores while we're at it. I mean, let's walk through your run as well. I mean, it was just amazing. Like, the whole level of this competition today is just out of this world. Oh, it's like next level this year. I mean, it's always, but I feel like the level gets higher every year. Uh, yeah, I'm like that. Ooh, things worked out. <laughs> And I mean, you did such an epic comeback. Missing last year because of an injury, unfortunately. This year, first one wasn't really as successful as you planned. And the second one, I mean, you, we couldn't even follow you. It was just one trick after another. <laughs> well, Felix, you're second, but that's an amazing, amazing result. Well,
words, I want to give a massive, massive congratulations to all the riders in final. Simple session, Talent Estonia makes some noise! 2020 official champion, congratulations! Oh, thank you so much. Smell like beer, but stoked. Super stoked. I mean, this year's riding, in my opinion, was pretty much the best we've ever had. What do you think? Oh, I'm just hyped. I don't even know what to say right now. <laughs> Everyone was having such a good time, including you, right? Oh, yeah. Riding bikes, having fun. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. Do you want to say something about Simple Session? Like, sum up what Simple Session means to you. Oh, Simple Session is just a vibe. The crowd's going off. Good times. All the boys are here. Look at this. Let's give it up to Boyd Hilda, Simple Session 2022 champion. The federal rider from the Gold Coast Australia here taking the win, followed by Felix Brangenberg. What a phenomenal ride from Boyd Hilda. Drama right to the last arrow. Yeah, this format best run counts. Like we said, it could be up to the last rider and last run, and that was such an exciting final, Ed. Okay, let's talk it through. Courage Adams, he had the run there. For the first 30 seconds, you felt like he might have a first place run. Boyd Hilda had already come out though and delivered that huge 97 score, which meant the pressure on Felix was enormous. Yeah, I mean, all of our riders today brought their A game and to see Boyd in his first run deliver such a great score high up in the 90s, but he had that bobble at the end and then come back in his second run and get that Smith with the gap and the grind, unbelievable right there. But you mentioned Courage Adams, look consistent, look great, dialed in, but the nose manual at the end, not able to link it together. But I do gotta give him such props for going for it and also, after the time, given us a show, attempting to pull that nose manual to bar spin. Yeah, going back for a second round of that was absolutely huge. I think we can take a look at some highlights now from our top three. These runs were absolutely breathtaking. Some of the best riding we've ever seen at Simple Session. Yeah, right there, Courage Adams. We're watching how consistent he is. And we talked about Courage being a new rider for 2022. And we talked about his approach. Definitely changing instead of the long Longer links we saw in the past where he'd use 30 seconds or so with manuals. I loved Courage's riding this year. He had that big flare and right there putting the hands up. But we have Felix Prandenberg, great use of the course, doing that over toothpick, checking in with our fans, able to pull the front wheel over and starting out with being this technical where you didn't have the momentum in the start of the run. That was very difficult. But look here, this is the most advanced riding out there and Prandenberg shows you with that 180 bar spin and then getting that ta tail whip in a fakie. But look how much bike control. Prandenberg easily able to revert around, but it's the details. Landing that 540 with his wheel and his weight off to the side to get that buttery smooth final spin. But it all came down to the Gold Coast rider Boyd Hilder going up above our visit Estonia wall ride in the rafters with that foot jam. And Boyd knew he was going to need some extra points and he threw that Smith with the bar spin after the feeble first run. He didn't have that. So maybe that was a little bit of his technique and his approach. But right here, he had the bar spin to Smith on the side of the course. Almost lost it with the front wheel, but Boyd was completely in control. And this was the exclamation point at the end of the run. Big 360 out of the banana, landing in a Smith. So much going on, and you have to be so precise to hit that four-inch peg on the coping. And uh, Boyd Hilder got it done. That was a fantastic roundup, Daryl. I'm going to let you go because you've got prize giving to sort out down at the bottom, so make your way down there. I've got to say it's been an absolute pleasure, Daryl. The pleasure has been mine, not only calling the shots with you, Ed, but also just getting to cheer on all of our riders. This is one of the best BMX events out there and the BMX family together, so... Cheers, Ed. Okay, you get going. Try and keep that beautiful outfit clear of the champagne as well. Uh, in the meantime, I've got to give it up for Boyd Hilda. You look at last year's results, you look at this year's qualifying results, and certainly in the Puyola factory, the top spots in the BMX finals have been 
totally dominated by the street riders. So for a park rider to come in and actually make his presence felt was a huge, huge accomplishment there. Now, if you missed it earlier on, we had the skate finals go down. If you haven't had quite enough simple session action for the weekend, you can go and find the skate finals on any of the simple session channels. Just go and search it out. Well worth watching. But for me up here in the studio, I've got to say thank you so, so much. Simple Session 22 has delivered and then some. And if you're thinking about it, make no more excuses. Make your way down here for Simple Session 2023. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Right now, though, it's time to head down to the floor for the prize giving of the BMX Finals Simple Session 22. is our crowd in Tallinn, Estonia loves BMX, skateboarding, and Simple Session. So how about it? Can you put your hands together not only for yourselves, but also for Andy, the Z-Man Zeiss? I do have to say, my friend, I do have to say, I do miss you up there. I do miss you up there, okay? Just that you know. Well, I appreciate that, but your voice sounded great getting the riders pumped up, and that was one heck of a final. Oh, I'm damn, well, damn right it was. But it's not up to you or me or everyone around. It's not about the riders, and we are going to reward those ride riders as we speak. Ladies and gentlemen, we have two special awards to give away. And if you're fine with that, I'm going to kick things off with the best Estonian rider. And he's going to walk away with a check of the LHB bank of 300 euros. So please welcome to stage none other than Tauno Kritz.
and we're talking about our BMX Best Trick winner. When the dust settled after 45 riders, excuse me, 45 minutes on the clock with some of the best riders in the world, your winner of Simple Session 22 BMX Best Trick goes to the rider who did a truck driver to opposite Smith Grind 2180 on the outbound banana ledge, Boyd Hilda!
So, you want to talk about a dramatic final? If you really want to talk about a dramatic final, you have to be in this building here. This building was electrified by that last run, and it was a heck of a run, I could tell you. He was not happy with his first run, came back with a big swing after missing finals and being number one qualified last year. He came back with a redemption. So please welcome second place winner, Simple Session, Felix Prager. Over 50 riders came to Talon, Estonia. We worked through our qualifying and got down to the 15 finalists. These are the heavyweights of BMX. We saw in the finals exchanging haymakers, the scores going and switching all the way down to the last run. One rider comes out on top and he goes into that rare air to be able to call himself a two-time Simple Session champion. Coming all the way from the Gold Coast, doing it for Odyssey, Federal, his girlfriend Bridget, give it up for the rider!
And these are crazy times. I know these are crazy times, but I know we're going to make the best out of it. So keep your smile, keep your love. Thank you very much, Alan.